You've heard them on your iPod. You've listened in on your computer. You've even stumbled across them on YouTube. But now, here they are, Timothy Deal and Nick Hayden, your hosts from the world's premier podcast on storytelling, tonight only, for their extraordinary 50th episode, live from Muppets Theater. This is Derail Trains of Thought. Hello, folks. Hello, Tim. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. We're at a good spot today. Yes, we are. It's it's just it's a, too bad the Muppets were actually uh, off on their world tour today. So, no, I mean that would have made this even better. It would it would have been perfect. But it's I am honored to just to be here in the same uh, the same hollowed ground yeah. that they are in. And there's a, there's a lot of uh, cannons in the background. I'm going to play with later. I think. Yeah, just just be careful of those uh, those plungers. I yeah. think that uh, that might be a little hazardous for your health. What is in the room? <laughs> <laughs> Probably everything. Don't go near the Swedish chef's kitchen. That's yes. all I'm saying. All right, but welcome, folks. This is a pretty exciting, uh, big, epic fiftieth episode. Fiftieth yeah. episode, uh, fourth year uh, anniversary, basically. Can you believe we've been doing this for uh, four years? I, it's crazy. We've been doing it for almost as long as my son's been alive. That's that's true. Yeah, about a year, yeah, year last. And year. hopefully we're trying to get better all the time. We got some really top-notch equipment that the Muppets have left us. Yes, and we're going to really stretch our uh, our ability tonight. See uh, how much fun we can put in your uh, day. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say fun Friday and try to make fun, and it just didn't work. I, I love your confidence in this whole thing. You're a Muppet. You have to. <laughs> It's awesome, no matter what. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, well, for today's episode, we've got a lot of fun things planned. Yeah, we're trying to expand. We yeah. thought 50 episodes, we're going to try to make an even bigger, better podcast from here on. Yes. You know, entering phase three of our uh, five-phase plan to take over the world with our podcast. Exactly. You know, so. eventually we'll have all of our spinoff podcasts, and we'll be on, like, you know... You know, we're already on YouTube, so eventually we'll be on like all forms of online media. Oh, exactly. And so. you you won't be able to turn on the TV without hearing us comment on something, you know, whether it's a deficit or yeah. whatever. Everyone wants to hear about all of our lost theories and all of our yeah. you know <laughs> all of our other obsessions. Mainly lost. So. Mainly lost, <laughs> yeah. So but to again to help us expand, we are looking into ha- having our third host. So f- we thought why not do it now? Yeah, so we're going to have some people test out tonight, some old standbys, some new people, and see what we can see if we can find someone who would really f- click as a third wheel. Yes. So <laughs> hopefully this will work out. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Nope. And uh, at the Muppet Theater, what could go wrong? <laughs> so okay, so we actually have a number of people here in the stands. Um, let's see you, the guy in the Mega Man uh, cosplay. Uh, that, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. Uh, come on, and we'll uh, we'll uh, get started here with our first segment, uh, Story School. Uh, hi, welcome to the microphone. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Nathan Marchand. Hey, well, oh, hi. we know hey, this guy. Yeah, <laughs> you, I thought you looked kind of familiar. Sorry, the Mega Man cosplay probably uh, threw you off. <laughs> Yeah, I was expecting more uh, zero or something. So. Yeah, well, good to have you back on the on the show, Nate. Um, I would just like to say I've got quite a resume to be the third co-host on here. For one thing, I'm actually the host of what I've been saying for a while is your sister show, but I digress on YouTube. And I might add, I may as well already be the third co-host because you name drop me almost every episode. Hmm. It's, it's a valid point. Yeah, he, and there was an era of this show where I was listener feedback. Well, he has a lot of confidence. So he that's, does. That's so a let's, good... let's see how, if we can keep up here. So. Okay. All right. So story school. Let's throw something at him. All right. Our story school topic today, um, fittingly enough, hopefully, is guest stars. So anytime you have a uh, person on the show that's not a regular, um, whether it be a drama or obviously Muppets, we're really good at having guest stars. Yes. One of the things that's uh, really worked for the Muppets, I felt, in terms of having a guest star, was that it was 
someone to bounce stuff off of, you know, because they're a pretty zany bunch. And so having someone, a normal person. A norm, yeah, then you can play off them. and they're all I wouldn't say all of their guests were normal. Well, <laughs> okay, that's... One of them was Alice Cooper. I don't think that qualifies as normal. Well, and that, that can also be fun, too, when you have, like, someone who's even crazier or, like, Spike Milligan. Man, that <laughs> British comedian. If you've never seen him... I had never seen him before. I saw him on the Muppet Show, and that guy is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> like the the Muppets are the straight man, and when the, the <laughs> and when the Muppets are your straight man, then you know you got something really bizarre going on. I'm sure Sam the Eagle was about having a head. Oh, he was hard when that was going on. You know, he couldn't just get a, get away with just saying you are all weirdos. <laughs> oh no, he was he was pretty horrified. <laughs> I guess those we've got those shows that are that's kind of their staple to guest star. Yeah, yeah, variety shows especially shows, yeah. were were very good. But, at those you know, sort of obviously TV shows pull it off in movies. I guess movies you could say. You can't really have guest stars in movies. The closest you cameos you have to in those is more like yeah, cameos. You got cameos. yeah. That's true. Okay, let's take let's take TV. So what what are the upsides or downsides of having guest star? Well, because I, you know you got reaction. You're like, oh no, the guest star they they need ratings. <laughs> right. And sometimes it's probably it. Sometimes it's it's purely fan service. For instance, maybe last season, I think it was last season, on Castle, uh, one of Nathan Fillion's co-stars from Firefly made an appearance. Oh, which one? Um, I'm, I forget his name. The guy with the hat. The guy with the hat? You know. That's really helping. <laughs> that guy with the hat. The, the, the knitted hat thing that everyone imitates. Watch? Yeah, yeah. watch. Yeah, the tough guy. Yeah, Alan Tudyk. No, not, no, not the tough oh, guy. Oh, Jane. Oh, uh, you're Jane. Jane, The man yeah. called Jane. Was the yeah. Pilot. Well, and it was really funny because on Castle, they had, well, what's the actor's name again? Alec Baldwin? Or is, what? Who plays Jane? I don't remember. Well, anyway. It's, Bald it's Baldwin, yeah. It, it, it's, Isn't that his last name? I think it's his last name. It may not be Alec Baldwin. Oh, the peanut gallery has an opinion over here. Look I, it up. Look it up. I forget. But anyway, they had to make an appearance. And, you know, he's, again, they like to make Firefly references on Castle sometimes because they can fill in. But what was great was that he played basically the same kind of tough guy that Jane was, like this <laughs> detective. Whereas Nathan Fillion in Castle isn't anything like his character in Firefly. He's like you know, he's not Mal. No, he's not Mal. He's not the tough guy. Instead of instead of Mal bossing, you know, keeping Jane in line, it's Jane basically kind of bossing him around. Yeah, actually, there was something like that back on Smallville because Jonathan Schneider was one half of the the Duke boys on. Dukes of Hazard, and no joke, there was an episode where they had the other Duke boy appear on the show, <laughs> and they even, because he was supposed to be, I can't remember, I think they were supposed to be long lost friends or something like that, like they knew each other back in high school or whatever, hadn't seen each other in years, and there was a point where the two of them end up having a conversation while driving a car, and they did a little sequence where they paid tribute to the Dukes of Hazard because they did this little car jump sequence, then they shot it like an episode of Dukes of Hazzard. Oh, fun. It was borderline meta, but I thought it was a, a nice touch. <laughs> and another interesting one, this one honestly blew my mind, was twice last season on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury appeared. Oh, yeah. yeah. As in, they had Samuel L. Jackson on the show well, I, as Nick Fury, and I couldn't believe it. It's like, I thought Samuel L. Jackson was this big movie star. How the heck did they pay him enough He was on Snakes on a Plane. Field, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Samuel L. Jackson I, I said anybody. he was a big movie star. I didn't say all of them were good. <laughs> but he seems like the sort of guy. He's just, hey, I'll do yeah. whatever. It doesn't well, and I was really glad they did, because honestly, Nick Fury needed to appear by the end of last season after all the stuff they had gone through. Uh, Edward's note, it is Adam Baldwin. Adam Baldwin. Adam okay. Baldwin. Okay, good to know. <laughs> there's too many Baldwins, and they're all acting. And they all blend together. So there's that fact. There's so just so like, you got fan service. Fan service, something people. I mean, people like guest stars. You're like, oh, I saw that guy. He was in this other movie, and you know, or, yeah. oh, it's Xena, but she's in space. Um, <laughs> what? Is, sorry, that's just Battlestar Galactica. Um, <laughs> not really guest star. I just, they, you know, they'll well, advertise like that. You know, because... You also advertise sometimes like names, and not the same character, but right. you know it's it's a sort of guest starring, you know, guest starring some famous actor. Yeah, it just makes it a little bit As more special. I guess in a sense, you could even say that sometimes you get guest star writers in a sense. Like whenever Neil Gaiman writes for for a TV show, yeah. it's you know it's instantly news. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean they're famous on purpose, but when they Suddenly, ah, oh, my show has this special. Well, and, and usually, they are about it. And yeah, and there's, yeah, it's, you feel like there's something unique about that kind of episode. I mean, it didn't work out so well when he wrote for Babylon 5, but that's kind of the exception. Yeah. What was it? Neil Gaiman wrote for Babylon uh, season, 5. Season 5, yeah. Um, it was a weird episode. Night of the I Dead? By, Day of the Dead? Point, yeah. I thought by that point, Straczynski was writing all It's the only one he didn't write after about season 2. Oh, crap. Yeah. 
Uh, um, well, I remember uh, watching first season of Alias. There was one written by was it Tarantino wrote an Alias episode? Yeah. Well, he actually appeared on Alias. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. I, I don't remember That's... if he wrote it or not, but he actually. Yeah. He was he was a villain for yeah. like this two parter. Why, why am I not surprised? <laughs> it was kind of cool. It was a good episode. Yeah. It was. It was fun. Well, actually, another interesting bit of a, of a guest star I'm thinking of is uh, you guys remember whose line is it anyway? Oh, sure. No joke. There was an episode. It was a big deal. It was a special episode they did where they had the late great Robin Williams on. The That's show. right. Because Robin Williams is the king of improv. And they had him on the show working with three of their regular cast members. They had Drew Carey there doing being the host. And I got to say, as good as those as the regular guys are, Williams was <laughs> blowing him out of the water. But he was also very generous to oh, sure. and try to completely overshadow them. Yep. I think, think then, you know, guest stars obviously can sometimes just say, I, we need ratings. We need, you know, something. But it can also kind of be in a, a way of experimenting with your show. Let's see what, you know, that's what the Muppets, you know, every episode. So it's like, okay, we're going to focus our skits around fill in the blank. Well, and, and sometimes, and they would vary. Sometimes when they had like a, the singers or, or something who weren't like necessarily good actors, that would sometimes be a great time for the Muppets to, okay, not do a, as much stuff with the guest star and just kind of do their own thing. I mean, that's when you get yeah, cool on things. on the podcast sometime, if we really wanted to be creative, we could get some guest stars. Yeah, that, that would be a good idea. <laughs> well, okay, here's a, here's a question for you guys. Do you, have you ever seen them do a literary guest star? Like in a book? Yeah, like in a book. I guess that would be almost akin to a cameo in a sense. Like, like say, some random character. Like, I guess you could say uh, the horse and his boy. Oh, yeah, because the Pevensey. Yeah, they up. show up, but they're not really the focus. But yeah, that kinda... would be a guest star version. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could. Uh, that's an example of that. I'm trying to think of other examples. I'm sure there are some, but I think they're not. Easy, as easily found. Yeah. Well, I guess usually it happens when an author does it in his own. Well, it would have to be an author in its own thing. Or sometimes when you have, you know, shared worlds, you'll yeah. do it more often. Yeah. I remember, I think the uh, the Christian authors, the Taney's, uh, Bodie and Brock Taney, they do a lot of historical novels. And I think some of their characters have appeared in, like, because it happened to be close enough in the time period or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a few examples. Or fan fiction, but um, well, fan fiction is rife with. Yeah, <laughs> that's the whole point. I mean, that's the whole genre of fan fiction, basically. Or well, yeah, well, to go back to TV, you can sometimes if you have spinoff shows and they'll have uh, characters from Flash the, from the original <laughs> show that appear on yeah. there. So the Doctor appeared on Sarah, a couple episodes of Sarah Jane oh, Adventures, true. or mm-hmm. whenever they do a new Star Trek spinoff, they have a character from the previous show yeah. appear on Usually there, being or being one or two. Or they're there at, at the place, yeah. you know, like when DS9 started, you know, that's oh, set sure. on space stations, but the Enterprise had, was docked there, so you got to see Captain Picard. Yeah. And I know some CBS shows have done, have done that, like a detective from one cop show will appear on another cop show. I'm to the point now where I'm starting to assume that all of CBS's shows take place in the same universe so they could just cross over with each I think other. It'd be, I, I, was t- I was telling my family one time how awesome it'd be, like, if all of these shows, like, did a massive crossover. So you'd have, like, person of interest doing, like, their cyber techie stuff and then you see like castle and uh back at walk by doing their like you know kind of well, poppy the, the problem is is those are two different networks so it'd be more like you would have to have sherlock and watson from elementary okay yeah no, i'd take that too you know? take that but too. I, it seems in modern sensibilities of story we like connections we like to see these people you know they're not separate units as much anymore we like to have oh this show is related to this show somehow or you know well guest stars just recently Simpsons that had uh, the Simpsons a were on with family, with family. Guy. Yeah. the drama guys are on Simpsons mm-hmm. again you might say ratings but it's also <laughs> but it's, it's fun, fun. Yeah. I mean, and we, we like to see that nowadays as readers and watchers we like to see oh look we can mix all our favorite pop culture stuff by the way talking about things that being single you and Sony for shameless plug for children of the wells anyway <laughs> i will do that later yeah <laughs> we will have guest stars on that too or of course um you know super smash brothers the ultimate yeah. kind of crossover <laughs> you know video game ever that's true mostly well, then if that's the ultimate crossover video game does that make avengers the ultimate crossover movie uh, quite possibly well, Kingdom Hearts, which, you know, is basically like, hey, we're just going to throw every Disney character and Final Fantasy yeah. character known to man. That's true. Oh, movie oh, sign. That's that's, I'm being that's our alarm. All right. So we're... <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so to keep things under control here, we, we, we set a strict 10-minute uh, time limit for all the segments today. So, so well, let's wrap that up then. So uh, Story School, I think guest stars can make something a little extra special. Yeah, I think you probably have to establish yourself. You know, if you use it too much as a crutch... Yeah. You can see right through, but a lot of people really want... It's fun. People like it. Do you remember the, the Scooby-Doo series that was, like, nothing but that, where they would have, like, random characters? I think Carol Burnett was on Scooby-Doo once in, like, Batman. No, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> okay. The 
reminds me of wacky races, which is kind of this. Okay. Similar, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, so yeah, there's good and bad ways to do it. All right, so that was our story school. Um, okay, let's get our next uh, auditioner here. Uh, how you and the long scarf uh, that wraps around your body a couple times. All right. So what are we doing? What are we subjecting this uh, this uh, applicant to? I don't know. Well, first, uh, int- please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Rachel D. Oh, I think oh. I know you. Yeah, yeah you look familiar. I, would hope so. I, I think I think we're related somehow. A little bit. <laughs> okay. Just a <laughs> All right. Second uh, cousins. Well, since since you have decided to audition for us, we're going to throw you into a segment called Our Take on Tales. Okay. For Our Take on Tales, basically the way this works is we just pick something that we've watched or seen or read or some, vibed. some interesting story recently, and we talk about it. So, since uh, you're auditioning, I was wondering if you had something that you would care to talk with us about. How about Viking? Okay. Since I've heard you don't know anything about <laughs> it. Uh, no, I've, I know my sisters, who you kind of look like one of them. I think they've seen it. Yes. So, uh, give, give, us, so Vikings is on History Channel? The History Channel, And it's about, yeah. I assume, Vikings. Yes, it is. Okay. It is. And surprisingly, it's actually historical. Like, Which is amazing for a history channel. Yeah, I know. It's all about aliens. <laughs> no, yeah, now there's no everything. aliens on this. <laughs> no aliens. No Hitler? No. Okay. <laughs> no alien Hitler. <laughs> No. Okay, so Vikings. Okay, so what's the kind of the premise besides the, pillaging? The story follows one main character called Ragnar Lothbrok. You can pronounce uh, that. That's nice. <laughs> yes. It's a fun... I love the name. I love all the names because they, they pronounce all the names the way that they would have pronounced it in the language. So I'm pronouncing it even slightly off. I've got, you know, the American accent <laughs> and everything. They, they pronounce it differently, but... So he, it, it's about the character Ragnar Lothbrok, and he starts out in the story as... Uh, he's a farmer, which is pretty rare in that um, for Vikings because you have to be well off to actually own any land because they live in, you know, they have all those fords and everything. There's no, like, farming land. So he's a farmer, but that also means that he goes and he raids for his earl. But at this point in time, nobody has raided England yet. It hasn't happened. They don't believe that England exists. Interesting. So he is the first person who thinks that England exists. They've heard stories about England, but none of them believe that it's real. But he wants to sail west, find England, and raid. But the Earl doesn't believe in them, all these yeah. myths and everything. And so he refuses. But Ragnar, he manages to uh, convince a few men and they go raid. And so the story starts from there. Genre wise, basically more of a drama than, say, like an action adventure thing. Or kind of half and uh, half. It's really interesting because it's a mix. You have a lot of action, it's like a lot of violence. The Vikings are <laughs> killing people. I mean, they are pagans, so their morals is kind of, are quite different than what we're well, used to. <laughs> yeah, it sure. does make sense. Yeah. So you have to be ready for that. But the uh, interesting thing about the story is it isn't just about fighting. You think Vikings, so it's all about piracy and killing people and things, but it's not. It's It involves a lot of politics, and it involves a lot of religion. At one point, they actually take a priest from England and bring it back and back to where they live. And so Ragnar is very fascinated by the god of people from England, and he's very fascinated by the English culture. So he's learning about that. And you spend a good deal of time learning about the Viking culture as well and their religion and how they believe things work. Yeah. And I might so. have to go hunt this down. This does sound interesting. It does. Yeah, so you get a lot of like the mythology and how they did things. It's just very, very fascinating. So how, how many seasons are there? Just right now, they're getting ready for their third season. Third season, okay. Are there like 13 episode seasons? or? Uh, I believe so, something like that, yeah. Okay, yeah. interesting. Hmm. Okay. So do you have a favorite character that's a... Ragnar. Ragnar. <laughs> there, are, there are some other good characters. He has a brother called uh, Roland who starts out kind of iffy, but he grows on you. Um, I also like Ragnar's son, who grows up in the story pretty quickly. His name is Bjorn. He's he's pretty cool. But then again, he's Ragnar's son. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the whole family. Um, th- yeah, the reason why I like Ragnar is because he's quite different from the other Vikings because he has a little bit more sense of morals than some of the other ones. A lot of the other ones like to kill just because they like to kill, but Ragnar is a little bit more intelligent about the way he, like who he chooses to kill. He's a little you know. un <laughs> <laughs> He's j- a little bit smarter. He uses his yeah. brain. The other ones just want gold, so yeah. it's kind of... Yeah. Interesting. So what kind of people would you recommend this for? Um, I would recommend it for, well, adults. For what <laughs> you, you're not recommending it to your uh, 10-year-old cousins? It, no. Okay. No, right. no, no. I will say that there are some sexual, like, they never, it's always implied stuff, so be aware of that. Um, so it's not like the tutors. 
I have not seen that. I have not seen that. Uh, <laughs> okay, then. But those are not but, on history. Yeah, I <laughs> would recommend it for people who are interested in history because it is pretty historical. It's th- these, these people are based off of real people. Ragnar Lothbrok is supposed to be somebody real. Do we have records of the, these people then somehow? Yeah, they do. For like, Actually, Ragnar's brother Rollo is based off of a king. I think he was king of Norway, I'm thinking. Okay. But yeah, obviously he doesn't start out as king in the story. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's, yes, it's I would recommend it. <laughs> Flying fish. Flying fish. I think somebody got yeah, bored. Okay. So. <laughs> so awesome. Well, thank you. That was. Uh, I think that's a good recommendation. Yeah, yeah, I wish you could talk more about it because I haven't seen it. But I, 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 one of these I have to watch and then come back and be like. That is true. That, that person that looked like your sister was right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Any other stories? Yeah. Okay, so that was one for adults. You have, let's hear you talk about something that might be for kids, that might be in movies, in theaters right now. <laughs> Not I, I, leaving. I just saw uh, Big Hero 6. That was really good. <laughs> It was really funny. And he's so huggable. How, how, <laughs> how would you place, out of here, I, guess, I have seen this one, but we won't go too much into it. How would you place with this one in like some of the recent Disney movies? Wait, what do you like, mean? Like comparison to Frozen or Wreck-It Ralph or Tangled and that kind of stuff. Do you have a favorite among those? Um, I would say that I liked it as much as Frozen. I would probably, I'm, at this point, I'm getting sick of Frozen, so it's a really bad to compare <laughs> things to that right now. I'm like, it's a good story, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I won't, I don't want to think about it for another three years. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's like one of those things, like, it's not a bad movie, but you've done it to death. We- yeah. <laughs> so. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Big Hero 6 is pretty up there. It's I really like it because it's very quotable, and I've watched it twice, and it was funny the second time around, which is pretty rare for a kid's story mm. because they, a lot of their humor is like, um, I don't know, like either it has to be in the moment and so when you go and watch it again, it's not as funny the second time mm-hmm. around. But Big Hero 6 well, is. It, just, it struck me when I went to see it, like one of the trailers was for The Penguins in Madagascar. We just seem like lots of... Yeah, that's a movie. Like they're making movies yeah. oh. strictly on the penguins of Madagascar. Which to me, the penguins make Madagascar. Like I don't particularly like the movies, but the penguins are the best. Well, part. I saw the so penguins. I'm like, it's gonna be no pl- It's just gonna be ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's yeah, just it's like completely like, like, like one. I mean, it was just one dumb scene after another. Then you see like a trailer for a Pixar movie, or even this, and it's just like there's just so much more heart that yeah. that yeah. just oozes off the screen. Because yeah. the penguins would be like you go laugh, eat some popcorn, and you're like, ah, oh, that was a nice you know dessert, mm-hmm. but it won't yeah, last. The penguins, are, the penguins are. Flick, yeah. and then yeah. this is like more hearty kind of. It's got a story. Yeah. There's more meat Heartfelt to it. Story. It's hearty. Yes. No, it's this, delicious. Uh. No, this is Disney, and Pixar is not part of it, right? Or no, it? no, yeah, it's. No. But you know, it's John Lasseter. Yeah, and yeah. anything and he, he touches is golden. Like it, so. <laughs> it's a Marvel problem. Well, true. Well, in name Marvel. only, practically. I, I was re- I was looking up, but it doesn't have a whole lot of resemblance to the uh, the comics, which it's fine. You know, it's they. I think they purposely picked one that was very unknown, so they yeah. could basically do whatever they wanted with it, which it worked. All right. Well, thank you. Very nice. We'll let you. We'll let you know. We'll get we'll, in touch. We'll, with we'll you. get in touch. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. For our next segment, let's get that uh, bearded fellow yes. over there. The one that's always on his phone over there. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the mic. Hello. Um, by the way, you look. You, you better strike your resemblance to the guy who gives that great introduction. So thank you for that. Ah. Uh, yeah. He he had a quite the voice. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he does. I know that voice. He's like a a very Ron Swanson <laughs> kind of looking man. <laughs> Has the attitude of the guy, too. <laughs> I think you're a perfect fit for our next segment, and that is going to be... Crackpot's Corner. This is a segment where we just kind of talk about some some kind of hair-brained idea. So here's my hair-brained idea, except please introduce Wait, yourself. Does that mean I'm a crackpot? <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll come with the idea of the day, and you just have to help me uh, fill it out. Nick's the crackpot. You just yeah. kind of help him with his madness. Okay. But we need an introduction here. Uh, an introduction. Yeah. Uh, my name is Zach Hayden. I, I think I should be uh, seriously considered for this. I believe of the other people here, I'm the only one with actual podcast experience. <laughs> so, um... You don't have a nice I, mic. <laughs> True. And what kind of podcast have you done? A little of this, a little of that, some, some martial arts stuff, some teaching kids things, you know, just some things here and there. Awesome. And I listen to like <laughs> 10 or 20 podcasts a week. So a week? I, I was afraid I'm, you were going to say kind a of, day. No. You try if you Not could. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> you guys sound funny on one and a half speed. I, I'll say that though. I do listen to you at one and a half speed. 
All right, so here's the, here's the crack pot's corner. So Go the 2014 elections are over, and Yay. so it's presidential time. And we figured, I thought, well, you know what would really work? Because, you know, politics are to involve everything of, of human life at this point. <laughs> so the, the next way they need to start running, partly part of their campaign, is to insert themselves, politicians insert themselves into scripted shows to kind of get people to know them and, you know, how heroic they are and other such things. Mm-hmm. So we th- we were, I, I think this is a good idea. I don't have any uh, details per se. You know, I thought, you know, what if you threw you know, some presidential hopeful into uh, Marvel's Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you can go and kill some uh, Hydra people? And uh, It would have to be a, uh, a conservative. <laughs> yeah. They're the only what? ones with the, the guns. You don't, you don't think a- the liberals would not be able to be on this show. <laughs> they would not be impressed. Well, yeah. okay, well then, what what sort of show would Hillary Clinton try to put herself on, do you think? Hillary Clinton, she would be, she should be on The Real Housewives, <laughs> but I, I don't believe that's what she would insert herself in for any, any... Maybe something like know. Madam Secretary? She yeah, she would, she would try to, which is a fantastic show, I must say. Um, no, I don't think she would, actually, because she would look very weak next to Tay Leone on that show as the actual Secretary of State. Um, so I don't think that would work. I'm, I'm sensing a bias here. I might be biased. <laughs> I'm thinking Hillary might be good on, um, oh, what's some good kid show? <laughs> Dora the Explorer, maybe? Yes, there you Yo go. Yo, Gabba Gabba. I think Dora the Explorer, yeah. Is she Because that would be courting her base <laughs> as well. Okay. Um, she Is there a large Hispanic contingent <laughs> listening to your podcast? Um, not that I know of. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that'd be good. You know who? Um, what's the what's the seg- or what's the governor out there in New Jersey? Christie. Chris Christie. He would be on Biggest Loser. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think that would help his chance. Yeah. He would lose weight. People would get to know him really well. He would go up in the polls being on the I, show. I can see that. Yeah. I think this, see, I think my idea is a valid way of winning elections now. <laughs> How about, say, uh, Paul Ryan? I I could see Paul Ryan being on Duck Dynasty easily. Because he's already a hunter, right? Yes. Actually, you know who was on Duck Dynasty? Um, Who might run for president? Um, uh, The... the I'm going to sound racist again. I'm not racist. <laughs> the Indian um, governor. A Jindal? Jindal. Bobby Jindal was on uh, Duck Dynasty. Oh, no, really? No, I think huh. Paul Ryan would be uh, probably in, like, I know 24 is not on right now. <laughs> okay. He would be, like, in 24. I okay. Think. Something like I can that. see that. So, like, person of interest? A, yes. Oh, he would be perfect on person of interest. He'd be one of the guys trying to take down some Oh, awesome. I, I think that would, I think he'd really do well. I, I, I could see that. And yeah. it plays to his base there. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Okay, what about some... Um, oh, you know what? Hillary Clinton, Modern Family. She'd be on Modern Family. Oh, okay, family. yeah. Realistically, yeah. And yeah. I think she'd do a good yeah. job. Yeah, that would work. I, mean, I don't think it'd be awful. Yeah. Other than it's uh, it's tough to watch her on it. <laughs> that's my own personal bias. Okay, what about some... Um, mainly because I know Republican candidates. But what about Ted Cruz? Hmm. Ted Cruz. Let me think of some of the shows I watch. What 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 would he be on? <laughs> he would be Agent of the Shield. Agent of Shield that's maybe. what the audience is saying. So? That's, that's what the audience possible. is saying. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how to pin him down, actually. No, you know who um, the, the what's the, Ben Carson? Is that oh, his yeah. name? Mm-hmm. Ben Carson, he'd be on Grey's Anatomy. Okay. He'd yeah. come in as a surgeon <laughs> on Grey's Anatomy. Actually, that would, and, that would uh, make a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> it, it'd fit really well, yeah. I think. Because Ben Carson, if you don't know who he is, he's a doctor, and he has some interesting ideas about health care. So. Yeah, I think that'd be good. He'd, he'd check okay. things up well, over there. Rand Paul. <laughs> Um, um, Rand. Oh, I thought I was gonna say if you meant if, if it was Ron Paul, <laughs> we could have him on. He'd be one on, on the History Channel with one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that's playing to his base, or? <laughs> I didn't say it. You did. You know, it's interesting. Now that I've thought about this thing, you know, the one place people have showed up on scripted television is Simpsons. They've been showed up there forever. <laughs> that's true. No, that's a good point. As a guest star. Actually, Rand Paul would also be a good appearance on Person of Interest, <laughs> honestly. Because he's got that whole kind of anti, you know, yep. not anti-government, yep. but very low-key government. No, yeah, I think he'd, he'd be good on there. Okay, yeah. so Zach, you're 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 a big Survivor fan. It's not scripted, but who 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 would Survivor benefit from being on Survivor? Who would benefit from being? I mean, on who like their you? They would like their poll chances go up. Um, I think Joe Biden. <laughs> I think Joe Biden on Survivor would be amazing. I would pay his life. Um, I think people would really. I think they'd love it. I mean, they would. The ratings for that show would go insane. I think Joe Biden would work really well on Big Brother. 
Uh, I haven't watched much Big Brother, but I would. I'm pretty sure. I, honestly, you put you put Joe Biden on un, any unscripted show, and it's a winning. It's a winning show. He's he would be fantastic. Okay, I'm I'm gonna get in trouble for this one. <laughs> We're not in trouble yet. Okay, uh, so which don't insult the Indian. <laughs> No, I was, I was, I was trying to think which politician would be a perfect fit for Naked and Afraid. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think the most likely one to be on it would still be. <laughs> uh, quite possibly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anthony Weiner. That's true. He would. He, he would. That's that's a good one. Oh gosh! What other? What other? Um, oh, what's what running? Other, uh, Democrats are they considering around? Um, Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> oh man, that's painful. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't. I know, <laughs> it's it's been a while since I've listened uh, to the. I was trying to think who they were talking about on the uh, a world, world and everything. In it, they were yeah, talking about remember. the the New York mayor Cuomo. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Wait, not the guy that like wants no. to limit soft drinks. No, 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 no. Oh he, no, not him. Yeah, no. Uh, Cuomo just won something out there in New York, I think. So yeah, him. I think so. Yeah, I'm trying to think. No, I don't know. I would like to see, you know, one of those real regular guys that just got put in, like Alan West. Alan West would be on some kind of army show, some kind of like Last Ship or something like show. that. You watch yeah. that? I didn't watch, I didn't watch that, that, but I think it'd be good on something like that. I like to see that uh, there was that 18 year old that just got elected for state legislator in West Virginia. West Virginia, you know, yeah. I see her on something. She would be on the middle. The middle. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd work yeah. well. I mean, and and she'd bring some sanity to to. And the middle takes place in Indiana, so we'd be happy. <laughs> sure. I know some politicians she could replace. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I we think, I, think I think we picked a good segment for yeah. you. <laughs> that was that was yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Last question. All right. Go for it. Old school famous politician you'd like to see in a TV show? Like you know, just you know, you want to throw Lincoln in or? Uh, I feel like Ronald Reagan would work really well on screen. Well, um, yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> or an emotion picture, like you can't go too far back. You get the powdered wigs and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it gets kind of weird. Though I I watch um. Paul Revere, not Paul Revere. What's the the guy in? Um, oh, the headless horseman. Uh, yeah, the headless horseman. I watch every uh, week. Sleepy it's a Hollow. Show, but I watch that one. Yeah. So he's in on TV already, and he was in the uh, in the Revolutionary. Actually, War. actually, you know what? Bill Clinton on Naked and Afraid. He would. Uh, love, <laughs> he would have a blast. He would like, he would that. like that. Would be his yeah. show. That'd be awesome. Or dating naked, you know, any, any one of those. I'm I'm glad he is more of a, a Twitter person than an Instagram person, <laughs> because that would be okay. Well, all right, we, that's we better all right, get going. Better. On that note, thank you for auditioning, sir. Yes, you guys can all vote to have me back. Hashtag Zach is hosting. <laughs> uh, all right, what do we right. have here? And now oh. it is time for a word from our sponsor. This uh, special 50th episode of Derail Train of Thought is sponsored by Destroyer, the deluxe version. Just out recently, um, written by Nathan Marchand, Timothy Dio, and Natasha Hayden, with a special short story added at the end by Nick Hayden. That would be you. That would be me. And that's a, that's a nice little sponsor spot. And let's get into that now. And we'll bring in, we're going to bring in a couple people for this, for this next segment. But first, let's bring back Nathan for Project Update. <laughs> Nate, tell us a little bit more about... Uh, welcome back to the microphone, by the way. You're welcome. And there are no robot masters here. I checked. Okay, good. good. Perimeter sweep. <laughs> uh, so, Destroyer Deluxe Edition. Do you have any words to say about this new book that just came out? Well, technically, it's not really new. It's a brand new version of it. The big difference is that I've migrated it from Lulu, where it was originally published, onto CreateSpace, because that's where the money is. <laughs> and oh, the, money. Uh, the, the, oh, the cover and everything, it's pretty much the same, but it looks a whole lot nicer the book itself is a little bit bigger it looks so much nicer and i must i have to give a shout out to nick here he helped me a lot with the exterior design the technicalities of it yeah because i i had it was so annoying using lulu <laughs> and i kept having to make about five versions of the cover because it would cut it would crop stuff out and everything it just drove me nuts and i got tired of fighting with photoshop after a while so the it looks much nicer 
the, the big addition to this one is this is the first time that Nick's bonus story, the House of Healing. House of the Living. House of the Living, excuse me. Why did I say House of Healing? Anyway, uh, it's the first time it's ever been in print. It was originally available on his website as an ebook, and now it's seeing it's on it's in print for the first time. It's sort of a sequel but not really side story largely yeah i mean yeah. It, it, it deals with things that were uh hinted at in the yeah. normal story yeah. but not expanded upon yeah. yeah the ironic thing is is that when the book was originally being written is nick was supposed to actually write part three but then we had to move some stuff around because it was part of a big group project that we were doing and ended up going to tim and i was i have to admit i mean i love what you did with it tim but i have to admit i was slightly disappointed because i really wanted to see what nick would do with it <laughs> bum bum and he did. He took it in a very different direction. Well, it w- and it would have been quite different too if uh, if Nick had finished the story as opposed to writing a side story for it. Yeah, I think I think your ending was good. But since you were doing project updates, since you've been on the podcast before, what other things have been happening that our podcast listeners might know? I know you were on originally to talk about um, my novel, my your novel. novel. Yes. So I know you're yes. working on a sequel. I'm. I'm I am. Uh, I mentioned in your your twentieth episode actually that I was writing a sequel. Unfortunately, a lot of things kind of got in the way and that's unfortunately delayed the production of life that. happens however i am currently about twenty thousand words deep into the sequel and if i stay on my kind of general outline i am actually expecting this to end up being the longest book i've ever written i'm i would not be surprised if it hit about a hundred thousand words it's pretty long at this point which rather impressive actually it, it'll be the longest thing i've ever written what is it about uh, authors that the the more books they write they seem to get along as they go on. Like, just, <laughs> I, I know because uh, I, one of the other things that I've worked on since I've been on the podcast before is I have a currently unpublished fantasy comedy novel that is actually 10,000 words longer than my, no- than my original very brooding at points dramatic novel. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because they say brevity is the soul of wit. So yeah, you're supposed to be getting better, and yet they still manage to get longer. I mean, I, and it's well, not just it's you. Because... I mean, like Robert Jordan. What? Oh, yeah. Robert Jordan write long books? That's unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how anyone can write a book that long. <laughs> I would honestly think about a hundred thousand words would be my limit. I don't think I can yeah, go yeah, I think, I think there's a real time that's four hundred thousand. Wow. Oh my about. gosh. I think I think the Sanderson I we talked about a couple episodes ago was. <laughs> yeah. Pretty long. You showed me that, but yeah. that thing was huge. That's part one yeah. of ten. Wow. It's like the size of a dictionary. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good though. But, Very um, good. <laughs> yeah, so I'm work. Uh, so anyway, I've got that. It's finished. I've been submitting it to a few publishers and agents. They have unfortunately been turning it down. But so now I think I might go the self-publishing route, which is going to require that I run it through the ringer with as many people as possible because I want it to look as professional as possible. That was a good thing. Sure. Cool. Well, good luck with with your upcoming stuff. And we, because we, we want to bring in another person here that had some stuff he wanted that we got to, our agent yep. told us that we had another person in the audience who wanted to uh, <laughs> Thank give you. us an update. Thanks, Nate. We have an agent? Shh, just go with it. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, and that would be uh, Brian. Come on up. Dum, bum, bum. Hey, Brian, welcome back to the Hi. podcast. It's been a oh, while, actually. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's sad. We had a ton of cinema selections way back when, and not as much since we've gone live. Yeah, so good to have you back. Yes. Thank and you. so uh, what what have you been up to in the last, uh, actually, I looked, since I've been doing the YouTube things, yeah. the last time Brian was on was episode 30. Wow. So it's it's been, so what have you been doing for the last 20 episodes? <laughs> well, uh, this summer I was working very hard on a project to create a video game playthrough and put the whole thing on YouTube. And I was able to do that. The game is Final Fantasy Tactics. Pretty old one. It's from 1997. Uh, it has, I, I found that it has quite a bit of, of a cult following. <laughs> nice. And the Final Fantasy plugin, obviously, yeah. you know, you sort of have a built in audience yes. already. I love the game, and I don't know how many times I've beaten the thing, but this time I recorded it. It's. In 310 videos on good YouTube, grief, good grief. it's all separated out into each little part. Wow. And wow. every scene is separated out. Every battle is its own video. Like, everything's on its own thing. Everything's on a playlist. Uh, it is 67 hours long <laughs> and uh, has every part of it that I know what's of. The, what's the channel name? It is called Final Fantasy Tactics Playthrough and Complete Transcript. And that's the, that's the channel. Complete that's Playthrough the channel. and Transcript. Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So if you want to go and find it, if you've never played it, it's, it's, a, it's a great Plus. game. Now, do you do, do you do commentary as you're doing it, or do you... I do not. You just play it. Um, I did put extensive game notes in 
And a long time ago, way back when, in 2006, I think, was when I first wrote the script for the thing. And it's actually in the part of each scene or battle. If it has part of the screenplay in it, it is all typed out as you well. You are a very so thorough it's all <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it seems like you didn't... I sold my... Well, I had Final Fantasy Tactics for a while, and I sold it somewhere. I didn't sell it to you, did I? I think you did. I, okay, so that's my copy. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I thought I thought yeah. it was. Okay, I'm like, was so that, that PlayStation? Right? PlayStation? Uh-huh. Yeah, original PlayStation. Yeah, probably came out about the same time Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, it's right around then, yeah. So it's quite old now. So, yeah. So what draws um, you? What, what, what do you love especially about that game? Is it mainly the story, the yeah. game? The yeah. story, okay. It's the story. Okay. It's a lot of religion and history and politics. It's, yeah, and a lot of sort of how it personally relates to all the characters involved. The writer, uh, Al-Islam Durai, was the guy that wrote it, and it's really good. It's one of the best stories uh, that I've ever seen in a video game, and the people who I know who look in the playthrough, they a lot of people have said thank you very much for putting this on and getting the scenes just cut out and so that everybody can just put it on the playlist and let it go. Hmm, cool. Did you... Have you played some of the other? They they have like a sequel, don't they, or uh, like the Tactics Two or something like that? Have you seen that? They had, I believe, some stuff for. I don't know. Maybe just an extended. I don't know. And uh, I'm not sure what platforms it was for. DS. Yeah, DS, and then another platform. They had something. You haven't played any of those, or know if they're the same? No, I haven't. Um, I've what I've understood is that the original has continued to be the best, best. Um, at least story wise. Yeah. Wasn't there a Final Fantasy Tactics or Final Fantasy that took place in the same land? Yes, land. 12 has the same it name. 12, the yeah. And it the had land. the same yeah. composer yeah. do the music, too. I, oh, you're right. Well, that, yeah. The music's what's, very, what's very, the, very What's good. the name of the world again? I'm trying to remember. Is it uh, Avalis? Or no, Ivalis. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, they use the same name, but I think it's probably like at a different corner. Or, I don't know if it's supposed to be like years later or whatever. From what I heard, the battle engine really ticked a lot of people off with that in, one. In, in 12? Like, uh-huh. Like you have to move around and then you have to move around until you get a chance to attack, and you have to press the button. Like it's, uh, it infuriated people, no, and so I guess the game yeah, didn't. No, you don't. Well. You don't have to like push a button. It's it's designed a lot like an like MMO in some ways, and like the the, uh, the characters. Like you basically you oh. program like how the characters respond to certain situations, and they do it kind of automatically. I mean, there's you can take more control over it if you like. I mean, but usually you have certain certain commands someone programmed to do this sort of thing, and then they go and do it, and then you make adjustments on the fly. Weird thing is. I heard the team from Tactics took over for the main numbered games at that point. Someone in our audience says that someone from Tactics took over (laughs) the main (laughs) number. Which, I mean, you can see that with with like two of the Final Fantasies going into MMO MMO versions now. So, I don't know. Yes, I played 11 for, I think, five years. (laughs) And then then there's 14, 14, which has been in the works for like eight. (laughs) Yes, I I, I considered getting it on the ground floor when it opened, but I... The time commitment of... Oh, uh, wait, no. (laughs) Some of the games... I'm sorry, sorry, not 14. Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, it's been like... Yeah, okay. 14 is the new MM. 15, which was previously like a spinoff of 13, but never at Okay, sorry. Our time is going off, so we got to get off Final Fantasy. Did you have any other projects you wanted to talk about? I almost wanted to ask him about his his Ingram. Uh, oh game. yeah, yeah. Just uh, if you give a quick rundown on this, I think this is, I think this is fascinating. On <laughs> um, this ingress game that you've been involved in. Yes, I came across this when it was in uh, beta mode. Uh, ingress, I N G R E S S. That was invented in uh, 2012 by a group called Niantic Labs, and it was then uh, bought by Google and mass marketed for Android, and then came out uh, this year for all Apple devices too. It's really exploded then, probably. Yes, it's continuing to get more but people. It's a what augmented reality game, technically. Yeah. Yes, it is an augmented reality, massively multiplayer, online, role-playing, GPS-dependent game. <laughs> wow. And yes, you have to have a smartphone, generally, or a tablet of some kind, at least something that has a GPS-enabled uh, it, device. It reminded me a lot of, like, geocaching, of, like, geocaching except a little, yes. a little more gamey and a little more involved. Yeah. Another thing that people say is kind of like is... Um, Square where you check oh, in yeah, okay. at various places, only it's oh, yeah. like a battle thing where you can... Do you still own half of Fort Wayne? We definitely have our own territory <laughs> mapped out. <laughs> but there's t- two teams or three teams? There are two. two okay. uh, they have considered adding a third, but I think they're waiting for the Apple thing, thing to happen. Right now, there's a green team and a blue team. Because basically, you go to, like, Landmark, and yes. you yes. capture portals, kind of, is the idea, with your phone. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you have to actually go to that location and then take it for your team if it's not already yours, or you can upgrade it. You can link them to each other, and, cre- and if you link three of them together, you create a field which covers the area over what they're connected by. And it is... Uh, 
there is a community and I find it different from a game like Final Fantasy 11 or Final Fantasy 14 or World of Warcraft because you're generally never going to meet those people and you're not going to be playing in the same place that they are. And since it's involved in a realistic fashion, yeah. then you can actually meet people in your town. Yeah, you said you met a good network. number of people that way. Uh, yes, it's a good way to get to know people and to get to know your own city, too. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things in Fort Wayne that a lot of people did not know even existed. <laughs> and we keep finding more. You submit them, and if they're good, they get approved. Interesting. So the number of them is has exploded. So it's almost it's so not it's just, almost, a just a game, it's almost like, like a social so kind of you get to meet people kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yes, there's also like a, there's also a story that goes along with the game okay. and it's I would guess maybe a sci-fi fantasy kind of plot yeah. that's related to how the game works. Well, yeah. And you don't have to read it to know <laughs> anything that's going on in the game whatsoever. I have actually never read a word of it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I play the game. I liked playing it, and yeah. I like the interaction. Uh -huh. It's a great game for that. Cool. All right. Well, All right. thank you for, well, thank uh, you for uh, filling uh, us in there. All right. Yeah. All right. And we'll, we'll yeah. have you back on. <laughs> yeah, we got some more stuff. Yeah, we'll have some more guys. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Great. All right. Uh, now let's do uh, now our let's do next our segment. We'll we'll hold off we'll the auditions off. for a little bit. You guys have all done a fantastic job so far. I don't. Yeah, we got a good good crop here. A good. Yeah. Good we might have to get now. like two or three extra hosts. Yeah. We have like spinoff podcast. There you go. Just yeah. like the soundtrack podcast, and just you know they just play music. Well, then is it really drill trains? If it's just the soundtrack, I guess it's a spinoff. It is, it's a spinoff. It's drill trains of sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, uh, let's go into our next segment. Listener feedback. So we've had a couple of sparse comments here and there around uh, the interwebs. Actually, I should mention, you know, since we've been we've been putting our old podcast on YouTube, uh, I've also been putting it as uh, basically as a blog on uh, thatguywiththeglasses.com just to kind of spread it around. Yeah, you, got, you got some some interaction there. Yeah, a little bit. I just got a, We just got a comment the other day uh, actually on our uh, God episode, which didn't have any, the comment was it didn't have anything to do with God. He just said something along, along the lines of, because uh, we were talking about Alan Moore that episode. So, oh, yeah. And so he oh, said yeah. something so along the lines of, there's a line between insanity and genius, and Alan Moore proudly walks it. <laughs> Which is accurate. Yeah, he yeah. does. But for, uh, for today's uh, comments, we thought uh, it would be very nice to uh, get something from one of our uh, longtime listeners who he, he thought about auditioning today, but he just couldn't he did, make it. Other things came up, so he couldn't audition. So he, he sent us... He's in the slush pile. This is, this is uh, Sir Gregory J. Meyer Jr., the third Esquire, uh, according to the note he sent us. I yes, didn't, it's a very, a very nice handwritten note and good uh, hand, uh, curvy script. You know. Yeah, it's quite impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I was afraid the parchment would fall apart when I... When I got it, it got delivered by Pigeon. Actually, yeah, it was very talented, and yeah. it's a long letter. A long we won't letter. put it. We'll probably put it all on the website, but. Uh, I felt like we should at least give an excerpt. The beginning of this letter, he talks about days gone by and about how kids not understanding how good they have it. But then he goes into this. He says, was it really all that long ago? It feels more like four years ago than 50. Well, I remember just be being just a lad coming home from school, trudging through seven feet of snow for eight miles, and turning that old turn dial radio and turning to station WDTT for that grand old variety program, The Real Trains of Thoughts. I lived in the wilds of northern Illinois at the time, and our faithful radio could barely receive the signal from somewhere deep in untamed Indiana. Needless to say, my little sister and I would pop down excitedly with our glasses of Ovaltine, curled by the fire, and as we listened faithfully to the madcap antics of hosts Captain Nicholas Hayden and audio editor Timotheus Deal through the static and crackle of broadcast radio. It might be hard for the youth of today to understand, but these two weren't the run-of-the-mill gang-banging trousers hanging off microphone-mugging hosts you'd witness today on your musical television. No, these were real men, full of down-to-earth wisdom and relatable to the everyman. No CC stuff. They were learned men, too, trained on the classics like every lad and lass should. When they'd reached the portion of their show called Our Present Take on the Tales Currently Current, you could expect truly enlightening conversations on such important subject matters as the air-bidding avatar, the young man displaced a hundred years in time to save the world, the science fiction classic, The Five of Babylon, the warring between stars long ago and far away, and excuse me, good sir, we are Muppets, not puppets show. I must wipe away a falling tear as I think of the intelligent banter between straight man Nicholas and that miscreant Timotheus. That Timothy, he felt just like an old school chum that he did. But excuse me, I'm rambling, as all retired gentlemen are wont to do at time. 
Um, it goes on and on from here. Um, <laughs> For quite a while, actually. Yeah, quite, quite a, quite a, pr- a laudatory uh, epistle. It is. So. Epistle is actually a good word for this thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's a yeah, brilliant it's piece a brilliant of writing, piece of and uh, we will yeah. gladly post that as, I think, I think we should post it on the blog spot side. Yeah. And as, as a postscript, Greg notes, note, I have just been notified by my faithful miniature schnauzer that it has only been four years since the podcast first began, instead of 50. Where does the time go? Thank you for all your hard work, Nick and Tim, and thank you both for your friendship as well as bringing me into your circle of writing comrades. I've truly been enriched by your faithful service in keeping the podcast going. To many more episodes. And to that we say, hear, hear. Hurrah. Huzzah. So thanks, Greg. That was that was awesome. It, it was great. We we really enjoyed reading the whole thing several times over. <laughs> Everyone so I just open up and read a paragraph and this is pretty good stuff. <laughs> All right, so All right. it's time for a, a time quick for break, a, a break, I think. So, I think. Let's, so let's, let's get into, let's get into our into first our soundtrack. First All right, Nick. All right. Um, we thought we can't do a podcast without a soundtrack. Of course. So we thought we'd try to do something very victorious and uplifting. And it was hard to find a really good one than we thought, actually. <laughs> well, you uh, had a couple ideas, but this was the first one the we one both that kind of were like, on. Yeah. You know, what we really wanted, like, you know, just like, like a five minute victory from Final Fantasy VII sort of thing, but <laughs> we couldn't quite get that. So this is uh, a remix of Luca from Chrono Trigger slash Chrono Cross by Danimal Cannon off of the Bad Dudes album Jingle All the Way. And it's uh it's pretty pretty fun uplifting victorious sort of stuff for f- having survived fifty episodes well forty nine and a half episodes yes so so <laughs> so yeah pretty fun all right ready go. Okay, now we're back. You know, uh, I heard that one of our applicants does not like soundtrack. Really? Yeah, I think that may. Uh, dis- <laughs> I think that may uh, disqualify him from the running. Oh, uh, that's yeah. That's definitely a count against him. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay, in the meantime, well, in the meantime uh, uh, it's time for, it's time for another word from our sponsor. This episode of Derailed Trains of Thought has also been brought to you by Children of the Wells, especially the newest uh, print versions, Jason Volume 1 and Brian Kalia Volume 1. If you would like to enjoy a modern fantasy, apocalyptic, serialized world, please join us at childrenwells.com. Very nice NPR voice yes, there, Yes, I Nick. thought so. <laughs> I like to bring up my NPR every once in a while. <laughs> Party hard. To bounce off of that, uh, our next segment uh, our next is segment A Bit of Story. Thank you. 
So for for the fiftieth year, I decided to make Tim read the fiftieth ep- uh, episode. I fiftieth year. This is how this Greg is got how confused. Greg got what <laughs> me muddling my words? I can't believe that. Um, no, but I decided. There's, there's I decided, that um by the way. Um, <laughs> I think I think we should have a drinking game where every time I say um. Um, <laughs> I would never get the podcast. Never... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, normally I read a bit of story because generally I have written things and Tim does audio and it's hard, or videos and hard to read a video. So this time I decided to uh, force Tim into reading a bit of story and he is going to tackle a bit of his uh, New Wheels Rising that we've mentioned here a number of times. And he is happily completed with. Yeah. And it looks quite nice in the new uh, print volume. It does. It, it, it's, it's, it's always it's cool it's to always see cool your work in print uh, in a book. I mean, it's I mean, definitely, if, if definitely ebook is the way you prefer, go for it. We, you know, we have the ebooks available for pay what you wish, wish, wish on uh, uh, childrenofthewells.com. But if you're one of a great number of people that prefer reading in uh, print, we have the first uh, three Jason novellas, one by Nathan, who was on here earlier, uh, one by John Baylor, who has. He, he he could not be here. He has been on the podcast, but not uh, not today. And then the third one, which is written by yours truly. So uh, I'll do. I'm going to do an excert from the third chapter. Uh, or I'm sorry, not the third chapter. The first chapter. Uh, okay, let's see. Where are we? All right. So basically, what's going on in this excerpt? Jason and his best friend Kyrie. They are looking to get out of this uh, small town of enemy territory. Of enemy territory, basically. Jason is. His cover story is that cover he's dead. Yeah, it's good to cover story. Yeah, <laughs> and no one is supposed to know he's a, no one's supposed to know that he's alive right now. And um, so they, basically, they're trying to get out of this heavily fortified town without being seen. I think that's the basics. Of what, so and there's there's a bus that has just pulled up to the gate, and while the soldiers are basically inspecting the bus, Jason and Carrie are going to make a run for it. So here we go. The main gate was only a few buildings away from the apartment where they'd been hiding, but it felt like a mile to Jason as he and Kyrie tried to outrun the bus without being seen. They kept the street of buildings between themselves and the wall, with Jason peeking around each corner to check for soldiers before continuing. Finally, the pair ducked into the last alleyway before the main road and forced open a side door into an abandoned convenience store. They found themselves in a trash storeroom, clearly picked over by looters. Jason and Carrie hurried into the storefront, ducking below empty shelves to stay hidden from big windows. Looks like we just made it, Carrie whispered. Indeed, the bus was pulling through the main gate as she spoke. Jason crawled up to the wall below one of the large windows and peeked over it. He saw the bus pulling to a stop in front of the last checkpoint with a squeal of brakes. I count four soldiers on the ground, he whispered. How many went on the bus to inspect it? Two, Carrie replied quietly. The soldiers now seemed to follow the same protocol. The bus doors opened and two soldiers climbed aboard. One of the other ground soldiers walked around the far side of the bus where Jason couldn't see him. The fourth man remained at the checkpoint gate, watching the bus with his back to the store. Jason looked up at the wall. One guard was visible, apparently monitoring the outside wall. This is going to be tricky, he whispered. Kyrie nodded. Too risky? Jason sighed through his nose and shrugged. Might be just as risky climbing the wall at night. And the gate might not be open again anytime soon. Does seem like the next crack, Jason thought to himself. Stealing himself, Jason turned to Carrie and whispered, Do you trust me? Carrie smiled bravely. Of course. Okay, follow my lead, but don't move until I tell you. Remember, run on your toes to keep quiet. Carrie nodded again, and the two pulled their improvised scarves over their faces. Jason shifted his backpack to a comfortable position, grateful that he had stuffed their packs tight enough to not make any noise. After double checking that none of the guards were looking their way, Jason silently pushed open the convenience store door. Still not attracting attention, Jason beckoned Carrie and the two ran out of the store, across a small parking lot, and behind a supply wagon parked on the side of the street. Crouching beside the wagon wheel, Jason barely breathed as he slowly bent down to look beneath the wagon. The third checkpoint was just a few yards diagonally across the street from their position. Jason saw that the feet of the guard at the checkpoint were turned away from the bus. Jason held his breath. The guard was probably looking in their direction. Jason didn't dare peek around the wagon for a better look. Carrie stirred and Jason quickly held up a hand, motioning her to freeze. For an eternal moment, the pair didn't move a muscle. Then Jason saw the guard's feet turn away, back toward the bus. Jason released his breath, which encouraged Carrie to do the same. He swallowed, trying to moisten his dry mouth. Turning to Carrie, Jason whispered through his scarf, Wait here, and stood. He stealthily ran onto the road, feeling exposed out in the open. 
The street and the sidewalk stood between himself and the checkpoint guard, a long distance to run with nothing to hide behind. Suddenly, Jason realized his foot had kicked a pebble as he ran. The skid of the pebble sounded like a drumbeat in his ears. His heart sank and time seemed to slow around him. The checkpoint guard turned to look in his direction. No, I can't get to him before he yells out. But Jason's body kept moving. Without thinking, he leapt onto the sidewalk and bounded toward the guard. Astonishingly, the guard didn't call out. He sent a puzzled look in Jason's direction and then looked toward the supply wagon. Pouncing toward the guard, he bashed a fist into the man's temple. With a grunt, the man collapsed like a sack of bricks in Jason's arms. Jason carefully lowered the guard to the ground, propping him up against the gate. Then Jason looked around, amazed that nobody had sounded an alarm yet. The wall guard was still looking outside, and the occupants of the bus seemed preoccupied with some commotion going on inside. All the better for us, Jason thought, waving Carrie over. You Therian pig! Hairs on the back of Jason's neck pricked up, and he whirled around, looking for an attack. Then he realized the voice was coming from inside the bus. Looking up, he saw through the windows that one of the soldiers was verbally and physically assaulting one of the passengers. I know you, you piece of crap. You're part of the Therian military. You think you can just sneak into Falcon Point like this? No, I'm a refugee, same as the rest of these people, the victim protested. A heavy bang echoed in the archway of the gate as the victim was slammed into the back end of the bus. Jason winced as the soldiers inside began heaping curses and blows on the poor passenger, but his compassion was interrupted by the cry of a wall guard. Hey you, halt! Kyrie ran up to Jason, her eyes wide with panic. I'm sorry, she yelped. Don't worry about it, let's go. Jason grabbed her hand and led her through the main gate archway. And we'll stop yeah, for there. We'll There's a little there. bit more to the yeah, chapter, yeah, but that's yeah, yeah. no, that's good. That's a good part. I like that. That's a good. Uh, that's really kind of the end of the opening scene, then too. Yeah, it's uh, gets you kind of an idea of. It's not all action packed, but there, are, I I do like my uh, chase scenes and that. You kind do of stuff. very nice set pieces. <laughs> I especially like that. I'm rereading it right now because I am planning to write the sequel to that story. Yay! So, which is pretty cool, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it should be interesting at the very least. Yes, at the, at the yes, very least. So, again, that's uh, Jason. Uh, the, the book is New Wells Rising, but it's part of Jason Volume 1. If you want the print version. If you want the print version. Okay, so after a long absence, it is now time for the return of Cinema Selections with Brian Churchill. Actually, here in a minute, we're going to switch mics with you. We're going to let you guys use these because, um, Brian, you I think you want to talk about a Godzilla movie. Is that correct? Um, yeah. All right. So, actually, we have an impression. I know one of our other auditioners here is a big Godzilla fan. So, the way we thought we'd do it, is, and you have a specific film you wanted to talk about? Okay. So, what we'll do is I want to give you a few minutes to talk about that, but then I thought it'd be interesting to have, we'll turn the mics over for a bit yeah. and give you two a chance to kind of talk about. To argue it out, fist fight. Like what, do, so. what, what, what do you think are the best Godzilla, Godzilla stuff? And we'll, stuff. me and Nick, we'll, we'll go take a break. So, <laughs> how about it? Okay, so, um, okay, so full, disclosure, um, full disclosure, I have actually not have actually seen not the new Godzilla seen film. Seen Godzilla. <laughs> um, That's unfortunate for you. By the way, this is <laughs> Nathan. Yes, this is Brian yes, Churchill. Nice to see you again. So, the hype that I heard for this new film was to wait for video. So, that's what I'm doing. But I I would have completely disagreed with that. I saw I saw it in IMAX. 3D and it was spectacular. We're not even going to get to the real movie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, for uh, the, the movie that I chose for this was uh, uh, a movie called It's a Long Title. It's, it's from 2001, 2001 and it's from Japan and uh, it's, uh, it's called Godzilla Mothra, Godzilla Mothra and King Ghidorah, and King Ghidorah Giant, Giant Monsters All Out Attack. Attack. But the but abbreviation, abbreviation that everybody that says everybody is just says Godzilla, is just GMK. Godzilla and GMK. And so it ends up being that. I I have held for a while that the only Godzilla Godzilla movies Godzilla that are movies good can be made can by, be made Japanese, by people. Japanese people. Um, <laughs> I am not sure about this new one. Once I see it, we'll figure out what to do. However, uh, uh, this is probably my favorite Japanese, Japanese, Japanese Godzilla film. One of them. Uh, uh, at least... At least that hasn't been made, hasn't been you know, made, at least you know, since at least since, since 1969, 1969. Probably one of the best probably ones, one the best ones since then. Uh, one of the biggest one things the is that the guy who did Gamera movies, movies actually directed this directed and made it, and, made and it's a lot different than Shizuke what the... Kaniko, I think is his name, or I might have the two names mixed up, I'm not sure. Nope, yeah. you're right. Yeah. That is correct. Mm -hmm. 20 points to you. <laughs> so what, what's the plot of this deal? I, you have seen it too. I have seen it, yes. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd chime in the occasionally. Plot the plot is that it pretends the other, all the other movies except the first one didn't exist. 
and so we're kind of starting, so kind of starting over for again. It kind of makes fun of the American one, right? It makes a little well, bit of fun of the first, of the first American first Godzilla American. film. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's probably a higher production value than what a lot of the Godzilla movies had been before then. And it also was not animated. They brought back the suits, which for me is a very integral part of Godzilla. Um, I, I can't do the animation thing as easily for some reason. It just doesn't seem like home. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, GMK, the, the plot is that we have uh, a heroine, central uh, female figure who is our main character. And we have Godzilla reappear. Uh, and this would be just the first reappearance since it... Pretends it was destroyed in yes, the original exactly. Godzilla. And so we have Godzilla come back and we have to have the guardian monsters, which end up being Mothra, Baragon, and King of Ghidorah. And they come back and they all have to fight Godzilla. And Godzilla in this one is evil. He's not a friend to everybody. And he's bigger than a lot of the other films and more fierce. And it makes for some actual tension, which got a lot of Godzilla movies. The tension is not exactly constant. <laughs> and with this, it, it actually has a driving a drive behind the story. You missed one of the, the most talked about elements of that particular film. And that is they, for the first time, actually tweaked Godzilla's origin a bit uh yes they yes. did didn't they yeah mm -hmm. as far as where as far as the thing that well, created him well, or well before the theme uh, the godzilla movies were always much more science fictional in nature and in this one they veered a bit more into the fantasy realm yeah by changing and uh, i think they still maintain some of the nuclear origins in this but in this one as opposed to being, you know, before he was, you know, the atomic bomb made flesh, you know, kind of a metaphor for it. And other times he was a force of nature. In this one, it's really bizarre. It's very Japanese, actually. In this one, he is... The only way I can describe it is that he is a divine avenger for the souls of all the Japanese soldiers who died in World War II because they feel the younger generation has forgotten them. Well, I was going to get to that, but the, the thing that, uh, oh, I, what I thought happened was that the, that it was the, it was to avenge the souls of all the people that the Japanese army killed. No, it was for the actual Japanese soldiers who died. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember they when I seen it. It's been a long time, because I remember we talked about this when I watched it with you, Brian, and I do not, it, it's been, been a number of months, but I do remember that it was really interesting that it was a sort of a... Uh, it's more fantasy. Well, that and it was it was it was related to you know a national guilt yes. in many ways, one Which way or another. Would you it it give Godzilla uh, a sense of you know meaning again, like the original one? You know that there were there was this now subtext there. There's I guess part I, I want to ask. He asks the asks prophet the guy, guy, "Didn't Japan lose a lot more in World War II?" than everybody else did. And I think she probably kind of was alluding to the nuclear attacks and everything else. And instead the guy says, no, in fact, the suffering that that was endured by everyone else is greater than what we endured. And even in 2001 to have a movie say that in Japan is pretty interesting. And I think even, especially in a Godzilla film, I think it makes that an interesting dynamic to think about because usually the, I think it is maybe sort of a paradigm breaking view of World War II, at least on the home front of Japan. Now, question, because it's, you know, often in cinema selections, we talk about, you know, these old school kind of classic, you know, movies, Hitchcock and other such things. Why would you say of all the, you know, there's how many Godzilla movies? Dozens? Japanese, Over 50. I think, it, no, it's not 50. It's, um, no, I think if you include both of the American films, I think it gets up to about 30. I think it's 28 because there's there's 15 in the first series. Seven, there, you, yeah. Because Nathan, you just wrote some sort of uh, article about. Yeah, like, um, yeah, I wrote a. I recently wrote a, a DVD and Blu-ray guide to the collection for people who watched the the new film and liked it, wanted to pick up the the Japanese ones, and some of those are a little bit harder to find than others. But there's 15. You have most of them. Don't you? I have all of them actually. Yeah, there's 15 films in the original in the first series. There's seven in the second, and I believe there are six in the millennial series which is what this one is part of mm -hmm. yeah there are three so series what and they what have to, you have to start another one which they since there's been an american one I, there's always hope yeah. something with it however 
<laughs> so here's my question then of having 30 some Godzilla films and you've watched all sorts of different types of movies what is it about this one that makes you put it near the top of Godzilla movies I mean obviously everyone loves the first one because it's the first for me one. it's all about Japan yeah. all about I think that Godzilla plugs Godzilla into plugs something in Japanese history Japanese that just means something so so it connects more with the, the natural Id national identity it, ha it has quite again. a bit to do with national identity and also just looking also at the films over time and how they've changed and how how the studio system so it, worked in Japan and especially looking at the first series of films and looking at the tone of them and how the stories are written, especially in the first series, starting particularly with 1964 with the Ghidorah film. And that's probably because it that was when Japanese films really started to feel more different. And after the economic after miracle the economic of Japan, which is one of the biggest economic miracles ever, <laughs> I think they became more comfortable with just, oh, whatever. <laughs> so, like, you know, you have the first movie and it's gravity, gravity, gravity. And by the time you get to 1964 with the Ghidorah film, we have slapstick fighting and comedy and things like that. Which so this is kind of return to down, form. Which I don't put down at all. I think there's a perfect place for it. I, I think it's a it's wonderful to watch yeah. a lot of them from the late 60s because they're so <laughs> good. Yeah, the fascinating thing about Godzilla as a character, if I may use the term for him, no. is he's one of those rare ones that has pretty much played just about every kind of role you can think of. He's been a hero. He's been a villain. He's been everything in between. He means different things to different people. For some people, he's just another B movie monster. For others, he's he is that atomic metaphor, and and for others, he's he is a force of nature. And on occasion, he's a superhero <laughs> and, and a force of just culture in general. He's yeah. a great cultural phenomenon. So Nathan, would you agree that uh, this one is one of the better Godzilla movies, or would you put a different one up top? I mean, if you take the first one out. Well, first yeah, out, obviously. You know, okay. It depends on what you're looking for. Okay. You're pretty much a Godzilla okay. movie for everybody out there. How about for you, one, for you personally? But for me... When I, I've watched GMK twice. Um, first time was when it was first on DVD, and then I rewatched all of them for Halloween a few years ago. And yeah, Kaneko was very impressive with his Gamera trilogy, but I just don't feel like this... I don't think this reaches those heights. I honestly thought it was a bit overhyped. I thought the, the concept of the Divine Avenger was... I thought it had more potential than they gave it. Rebuttal? Um, <laughs> I think well, the, part of the reason why I like GMK is how the story decided to be different. And we, we, when we finally... So it broke the mold from lava. the hands of some people who were making... I don't know. The Millennial series for me wasn't exactly astoundingly, fantastically awesome. <laughs> but I don't consider this part of the Millennium series because really it was, this is a different guy. That it's different. Stuff. And I think it stands out from the rest of the Millennial series a lot. It does in a lot of ways, I'll say that, in especially in terms of filmmaking. It has a very unique style compared to the rest of them. I'll give it that. But I don't know. I don't like this one as much as other people do. But I will give it credit for being bold. I mean, they made Ghidorah the hero in this. He's never been that before. He's He is to Godzilla what the Joker is to Batman, pretty much. This would be like making a Batman movie where the Joker's the hero somehow. I wonder if they've done that. You know what I love about this Simo Selections? That we have academic discussion about Godzilla. <laughs> Because, you know, I don't I don't know much more Godzilla than, you know, Brian showed me and Nathan showed me. But, you know, that would be like, Gamera does this and Godzilla does You know, that's cool. I, this is what the podcast is for. For so, nerd so, fights? Well, among other things. No, but I like the, the idea that Godzilla, uh, you know, we both have said there's Godzilla for all kinds of people. And I think, you know, it was interesting that... I can't remember the name of this one. What do you call it? G D yeah. GMK. You know, because I watch it. I, I I remember enjoying. It. I have not seen all the ones, but I thought, yeah, this is one of those that has this sort of symbolic meaning. But I know there's you know some horribly ridiculous ones and some. I've not seen the new one either. But we'll have to cut off cinema selections. I'm sure we could talk about Godzilla for. Uh, Hours and maybe we will have someday have a Godzilla episode. But <laughs> you will have me back on and Brian. <laughs> there we go. All right, Godzilla. thank you. Godzilla. I'd be surprised if someone hasn't used that name. Actually, the real trains of kaiju. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right. Well, I am back to the microphone. Oh, we have uh, another uh, word from our sponsor, don't we? Now. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. 
Derail Trains of Thought has been brought to you today, this very special 50th episode, by Ajira Airlines. We'll get you to your destination on time. Or before. Oh, I know I've never flown Ajira, but I, I would like to sometimes. I hear they have really nice benefits. Yes. So something for you to look up on Wikipedia later. <laughs> So, okay, what what we got? I'm, I'm getting a little, there's a lot of segments. There's a lot of going okay. on, yes. There this, is. Is a, this is a crazy episode. Well, we've gone through well, most gone of through most of our segments we introduced within like the first 10 or so. Yeah. But this is a, yeah. this this next is segment we didn't introduce to like episode 21. Which is one of our later segments. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you keep them count, we've been putting segments out in the order we actually introduced them. Yes, with the exception of soundtrack and sponsors. Well, that's because okay. those are yeah. staples. Yep. Well, not sponsors, but <laughs> well, if you would like to sponsor us, please send us three hundred dollars. We would be happy to make them a staple again if you wish. <laughs> if the people demand it, we will have to. We will have to have. Yes. Okay, but but let's begin our next segment. What if? Okay, so what okay, if is so when we if, take a look at a hypothetical situation and say, well, what if this happens? And we go a little crazy. And so, it, again, so some of you might sound similar to Crackpot's Corner, or Crackpot's, yes. but it, we tweaked it because Crackpot's Corner has basically been gone since what? Yeah, we, we haven't brought it back in a long number of years. What if basically kind of replaced yeah. it? Because we ran out of, because Crackpot's Corner was supposed to be kind of... We have an idea... What if we, you know, what if we made, you know, a hotel that was like a game of mist, you know, that sort yeah. of thing. Or what if we had town-wide movie sign, you know, alarm goes off. Like actual invention, as yeah. opposed to being like, what if, you know. What if, yeah, like what if uh, Michael Bay directed Wizard yeah. of Oz. Which is one of our all-time favorite. <laughs> which, that is one of your all-time favorite. Uh, it's an audience favorite, yes. I think. So today so we thought today, we'd bring in one of our, let's have, let's have one of our people who hasn't gotten a chance to talk in a little while. Actually, we'll let's we'll take a volunteer between that bearded one over there and the one in the scarf. Who wants to take a chance? Should we give him a topic out? before we? Or oh yeah, we should. We can give him. Yeah, a topic. that might help. That help him out. So the topic for what if today? Your next podcasting job is on the line with this. Okay, guys. Yeah. So the topic is what if this is actually our 500th episode as opposed to our 50th episode? Yes. What would that look like? So, so we know you, we know you both. Listen. <laughs> Okay, so we have uh, the bearded one is stepping up. Bearded Mike. one. Oh, welcome back. Hello. <laughs> all right. I think, first of all, if this is your 500th episode, I will have lost in my battle to end <laughs> as part of this. Well, here's the thing well, there podcast. are 3,000 overclocked remixes. Um, in 500 episodes, we get through 1,000 of them. So That's we've true. got time. <laughs> no. That's not counting all the other. That have come up in the last. Because, you know, it, well, it took us four years to do 50 episodes, so it's going to take us 40 years to do 500. Well, in, in like those four years, I'm sure they've had hundreds oh, of yeah. new soundtracks. So you know. So okay, so so say so. Wait a second. So it's 36 years De na later now. Dear audience member, <laughs> I have I have given some some advice to these young podcasters here on on some things that I think they should do. One is get rid of soundtrack just for my own personal benefit. <laughs> But um, uh, no, five hundred. Yeah, episodes. I'm, about, I'm about sixty now. I, think. <laughs> I would say if this is your five hundredth episode, you've done a better job of getting them out more um, more regularly, consistently. Probably. Yes, that would be good. They probably get piped right into my brain <laughs> instead. <laughs> my Apple implant is um, functioning well. That's good. I'm glad your Apple implant because you you sold I, your soul to you Apple. Prob You've probably doubled your your listenership <laughs> to at least ten. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I, was, I should hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and not all of them are on the 500 well, well, episode. We had we, we did open our uh, our we had a public IP. Is that what they call it, when you get it on the stock market? <laughs> yes. Briefly, and it crashed and it went badly yeah. after that. That that about after episode 257. So yeah, that's so, a good point. Yeah, so we we so broadcast directly into people's right. brains now. So do we? Yeah. Is it still audio only, or have we gone to like video podcasting? I believe um, that Apple now has the ability to pipe the video right into people's um, okay. retinas. Yeah. And the so, smell as well. I think so, you can do that. <laughs> well, depending on where the we smell go. Smell vision has not gone off well. It's it's much like QR codes, and it doesn't really. We may, we'll really. probably actually have gone to some of these places we say we've gone to. <laughs> Nick, we've wait, always gone to these places. Wait, you guys, this isn't, what? <laughs> I thought you guys were on, always at those yeah. places. We're at the Muppet no, Theater that's, that's now. One of those, that's one of those um, urban legends that rose up over about episode 187. 
<laughs> what, that we weren't at these what, places? That we weren't. That we oh, weren't do you guys these... remember 100? <laughs> you guys remember 100? We've done a lot of interesting topics. Do you guys okay? remember that episode? That was yeah. nuts. Absolutely. If I remember correctly, episode 187 was when we talked about footwear in Victorian novels. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were kind of scrouging for uh, ideas for a little while. Yeah, we, that was before our resurgence, around 207. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of a research. We had a, a, a creative resurgence where we really got back our base. Well, it really helped in like by, by like around two, episode 224 when that's when virtual reality really took off. Yeah. And we had like a whole new realm of things to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. No, by the no, I think you guys are, are in your old <laughs> age now at uh, episode yeah, you're 500. You're so much younger here. <laughs> Um, uh, I think you're misremembering because if episode two something is when uh, virtual reality started coming out, uh, you guys must have been piping these out much faster because uh, huh, that happened. That might have been the flying car. That might have been the flying car episode. Are, are you counting uh, Oculus Rift or however you say that thing? Well, I'm not necessarily counting that one specifically, but it's – it's um, it's uh, Prodigies. Okay. But, but I know we've had some. We had some trouble somewhere. You know, everyone's all coming with good topics. I mean, after four or five hundred episodes, you start yeah having a little bit of whatever. I mean, for a five hundred episode, obviously we had to pull out all the things. You know, because we've been getting bigger and bigger every fifty episodes. Yeah. I mean, you know, so basically we bought an entire town and had a musical. Man, I tell you though, it was it was a pain when we got to the four hundredth, and we had to recap every episode we had done before I mean, then. I that know. was a lot of material. That was a through. lot of material. You guys remember the dark years? I try not to. They were rough. I, I'm not going to lie. When you guys decided to put two soundtracks in the middle of each episode. Well, oh, oh that dark air. I thought you meant when we had the robot apocalypse and we, you know, we had to, we had to no, pipe no, no, it no, no, from no, no, our no, basement no. over a little radio, like the over, over, for, over. It sounded really scratchy. Yeah. Over, over free, you know, free radio, you know, America. We yeah, were no, using. No, not when, those years. Those were pretty good. Cause I mean, it, it, it added a lot of character so. when we had to record via phonograph. I mean, don't get me wrong. Well, then, you know, for a while we had to encode everything through some sort of uh, enigma kind of thing, you know, just so that the, you know, none of the aliens could hear what we were saying. Oh, that's true. That's true. The government tried to cut, you know, shut us down for a while because they were afraid that they were they were going to get too many secrets of our culture. Well, that, yeah, exactly. And, and at that point, we had some of our spinoffs and we had our TV and politics spinoff going on. And, you know, that would got that, you know, there's some problem. Yeah, Podzilla was. That was <laughs> it didn't last very long. Yeah. Really. They uh, they were at their they were at each other's throats way too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good times. I mean, there were yeah. some bad times, but there were some good times. Yeah. I mean, what do you think was the worst episode we ever did? Oh, I think Zach would probably say it was like our all all soundtrack episode, <laughs> all soundtracks <laughs> episode. That one was pretty horrendous. I actually just skipped that one. <laughs> Well, then there was a time we discussed the number of uh, exclamation points in modern novels, and then now yeah. we analyzed excruciating detail the breakdown of Paul's the Apostle Paul's have you guys, comma use. Yeah, have yeah. you guys seen the uh, the online community of people who have those uh, what is it cirrhosis of the liver? They play the derailed trains of. of Thought uh, drinking game. <laughs> Every time Lost is mentioned, they have. You a, know the thing is, we have single handedly kept Lost to be a cultural phenomenon. <laughs> Babylon that Five. That is true. They, Babylon Five would have been forgotten long ago. Yeah, they, they, you know what the, the problem, only you know, ones who are talking about? Little, a little uh, power hungry that one time. Remember when they came to us and said, "Would we be part of a remake of Lost?" Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had good some good ideas, but a, yeah, I mean, when the smoke monster ended up being an actual dinosaur in the first episode, and then you know we you know Hugo go what what's his real name? Um, oh, you mean Jorge Garcia? Yeah. Anyway, you know he had frozen his head. <laughs> you know after he died, we brought that back for you know to be in charge of Dharma. It was just it was just wrong. Yeah. Though so, you know, but you know what kept us alive too. We've been reviewing Star Wars movies for the last uh, 40 years. <laughs> That's true. We'll never run out of those. No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, you know, uh, what was it? it? just came out. The the Force Reawakens again one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was... That was... I mean, a lot of good times. In a, lot of, a lot of good times. Well, thank you for this wonderful walk down memory lane. <laughs> no problem. Happy to be here. Um, here. Just so you know, uh, I should warn Zach beforehand that so Sealer 500, we decided that we we're going to play consecutively all our soundtracks from the last 500 um, back to back. Yeah. 
But live. We got live musicians here. Yeah, that to do it. I know. I I was thrilled that they managed to get some of these people in here. I know. Especially like that uh that one crazy machine that Maze Dude created. Like that just makes crazy music all yeah, the time. Yeah, I mean it's like it was hard to even fit in our house. Yeah, it's kinda of disturbing to look at actually. Yeah. It's kinda of like that scene There's in There's some um, things I've never seen. It's like before, that scene in the rules chain or in the um what is that? What what's that French old French movie? The rules of the game. It's like that that big organ thing. Okay. Yeah. You guys got to 500 episodes with the phrase, that old French movie, as part of your well, show. You know. I'm out here. Don't even consider me for the third host. I'm, I'm done. Well, I'm out. Know, that's, that's all we got. That's all we got. Well, at least that whittles one down. Yeah. <laughs> Down to three. Down to three. Okay. It's like it's like Charlie, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. That's true. They all kind of <laughs> get bumped off. Yeah. So at the end, Tim, we gotta get really mad and go to our office, and there's only ha- really half an office, and then we'll see what happens. All right. And then we'll go to the moon in a glass elevator. I keep trying to go on to the next segment, folks. <laughs> <You gotta laughs> keep dragging it on. Okay. Apparently, Greg said I'm the straight man. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure how he got that mixed up. <laughs> Okay, for our next segment, this is, we don't actually have an intro for this, but that's fine. This is live brainstorming. Live brainstorming. Actually, this is a section we only did once. Once. Which where we did, uh, we basically tried to create uh, flash fictions off the cuff just by listening to music. By listening to music. And it was a lot of fun. Zach. <laughs> yeah. I think that was before he started listening. Yeah. Anyways. But, but uh, we thought we'd do that, but we're not, not, not going to actually do that because we figured our creative juices, yeah, it would be complicated and a lot of things. Plus, then we can smash in one other thing we did only once. Yes. Well, it was from What If. Yeah, okay. We're importing sure. a segment from What If into this, and that is Death Matches, where we, we asked all of our people who on who are appearing on the show today to come up with a fictional character. Ooh, except did we ever get Zach to do that? I did, while, okay. while you guys were talking Godzilla. Okay. And we're going to take... Two of these up and put them in a death match against each other. And you guys. You have to defend your fictional character in the death match. Yes. You have to defend to see who wins. Who would win. So, first up, we have. Last time we did this, what? who won? Jakar? Yeah, Jakar from Babylon 5. He, he ended up being up, what? Uncle Scrooge, I think. Yeah, he beat, he beat, he beat Uncle Scrooge and um, Santana. Although, this time we, we made the stipulation no superpowers just to kind of keep things on an even level. So, we'll see how that goes. So, first up, we have Shinji Ikari <laughs> versus Jed Bartlett, which is the president, President Bartlett from West Wing. All right. So, so this is <laughs> this is Nick against Zach. Okay. So uh, Sinji Kare, I will have to explain for anyone who does not know, is the main whiny character of Neon uh, Genesis Evangelion. So <laughs> I dropped my mic and walked off. <laughs> no, but he, how how is Jed Bar- Bartlett not? Well, here's on the this. thing. Sinji Kare has a giant robot. Jed Bartlett yeah, knows Latin. <laughs> I don't know, Tim. You're 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 oh, the referee. Oh, when you're the referee here. Yes. Uh, Jed Bartlett has the f- nuclear football. He do- oh, okay. Nukes don't really work on Evangelions. Okay, because hmm. Jed Bartlett isn't whining. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, granted, if you just make Sinji sit by himself alone, he'll probably just waste away and die. But <laughs> <laughs> so we could just have a fist fight. How about we just sell this with good old fashioned fist fight? Okay, just you can simplify a fist fight. I mean, I mean, for this case, if you're not going to let us have a a giant, uh... Like, I mean, it's very, like, I, I'm not even sure Shin... Here's the problem. I don't think he, Shinji would even want to get in the Ava. I mean, for that's, this sort uh, of that's thing. True. So, Shinji doesn't have any choice but he, a fist He fight. just dies. No, and his dad could yell at him, and it wouldn't much matter. matter. Yeah. Okay, I think Jed so, Bowler uh, kind of wins by Bartlett. default. Yeah. I told yep. you. Okay. Okay, we're going He goes on to the next round. Yep. But Jed we'll Bartlett do... will be back. Nice choice. Although, again, you lucked out there because, yeah, anyone could probably could have beat Shinji. I know. <laughs> I didn't want to make my guy too. I knew what I was doing. So, Shinji, Shinji could be, if you if you attack like Ray, he might try to attack you a little bit. Yeah, but we're not bringing anyone else into no. this. No, well, it was on the off chance that someone, you know, mentioned Ray Ayanami. No, you see, know. I, I went with the opposite tactic here. I, I went with, with someone awesome, namely director Phil Coulson of <laughs> S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who's who's Phil Coulson against here? Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. Oh, oh, that's gonna be nice. Yeah. So, okay, so you can. Re- so I'm the referee here. Okay. Yep. So, uh, all right. So Nathan picked up Buzz Lightyear. Uh, I'm just gonna say Phil Coulson. He's got 
if we're using Buzz, I think they, they both should have their full arsenal available to them. And Phil's got a pretty awesome arsenal. I mean, invisible planes, a whole agency up, you know, with them. That's not an arsenal. That's a small fleet. <laughs> I don't think that counts. It's whatever he can carry on his Okay, well, that's fair enough, too. I mean, he's... Okay, so he can carry around his big gun thing. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> that he doesn't know what it I does. I think he knows right? what it does now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, as we've seen on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I mean, he's he's got some moves. It's not just the gun. I mean, he's he's uh, he's he's a, he's got lots of experience. Well, can he Latin dance yes. like Buzz Lightyear? <laughs> I don't know. There he, you go, right there. Yeah, this could turn into a dance contest, and I think Buzz Buzz wins. Well, I don't right know because have you seen what he can do when he's in Spanish? This is mode? true. This is true. Sorry, I did not mean to offend the Hispanic audience <laughs> again. <laughs> but uh, then again, Phil, you know, he did cut a rug with May. I mean, they were looking pretty good together. This is true. But is this still a fist fight or well, a dance we, off? We, I think Nick should decide. I think should both. Decide. <laughs> <laughs> no, you okay, fist first, fight first. No, fist fight want... first, and then if you can still move, a dance off. Okay. Well, first I want to argue that first off, Buzz may be a toy, but that makes him a small target, <laughs> and he's incredibly clever. Have you seen some of the escapes he's pulled off? True. I, I was assuming you were gonna want to go with like the actual Space Ranger Buzz Lightyear. Oh, okay. I get. I get. I was. I was a little afraid at first that this was gonna be you know toy Buzz no, no, Lightyear. No. I wasn't sure. Are we gonna clarify? I'll, I'll let on you. That? Well, it depends on what you want to do, I guess. But I mean, I'll let you do. Well, if I have the option of using real Buzz Lightyear, not toy Buzz Lightyear, I vote for real Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> okay, go for it. That's fine. <laughs> Like I said, he has a laser. <laughs> what are you going to do about that? Uh, Phil Coulson has, he has a, like a pinpoint laser thing. Uh, I think Phil Coulson will just. What pinpoint laser thing? I don't remember a pinpoint well, you know, laser it, thing. And I've seen every episode of Agents well, of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, I mean, Buzz, it's just, it's, he, all he has is that little like dot on his sleeve. Phil's got this like giant, like, you know, 90s level, you know, 90s kid kind of, <laughs> kind of gun that he could just blast Buzz away with. He's going to look kind of like uh, what Buzz did at the end of the video game in Toy yeah, Story 2. Too. When, oh, when yeah, Zerg yeah, just yeah. <laughs> have you seen? Have you seen what was what the was the his, uh, Buzz Buzz's uh, arch nemesis? Zerg. Again, I remember his name. Zerg. Zerg. Have you seen what Zerg can do? He's defeated Zerg. He's an intergalactic overlord. All right. What's Phil done? He got stabbed in the back by Loki. Okay. But uh, okay. but to bring up the stab in the back, he did die and come back again. True. <laughs> yeah, and he. I'm still not sure he was better off for it. All right. Does this serum heal him still? I, I don't think so. No, no. I, don't, I don't. It's not no. a, like a Wolverine thing. Though. Although that no, would be. He's not. A, it's not a Wolverine. All right. Well, we need an audience. Uh, I think we need an audience vote for this one. All right. So Phil Coulson. Buzz Lightyear. Uh oh, I think Phil Coulson won there. Okay. It was it was two to three. It was close. It was a very close match. But well well fought, sir. Well fought. <laughs> All right. Who's up next? I think that just leaves. I think we had Torgo in the last running too, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> he well, he lost immediately. Though. Okay, so our last two that leaves Londo, uh, the Centauri ambassador from Babylon Five. Awesome. Londo awesome. Malari. I'm very happy to have him in this And the race. other one is uh, Yzma. Is this from The Emperor's New Groove? Okay. All right, here, here, Rachel. You can be over here. All right, this... I, I have absolutely no idea what to think about this matchup. <laughs> this is a really odd yeah, matchup. Yzma, you don't know who Yzma is? Have you... Have you seen... No. You know what Emperor's New Groove is? Oh. It's a Disney movie where the guy gets turned into a llama. <laughs> the, the prince. <laughs> Uh, it's like 98, I think. Something like that, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very quotable in the Deal family. Like, we, we quote the entire... In some it's ways. It's just nuts. The whole kind of thing. Looney Tunes. Anyway, Yzma is kind of... She's a magician, but not really. She's the villain. She's more, she's more like, like a scientist magician. Yeah, she's got yeah, like potions She makes and these stuff. potions. It's how she turned him into... Oh. Yeah, alchemist works. She turned the emperor into a llama. So basically, she can turn anybody into any animal she wants. <laughs> llama, he's llama, supposed he's to be supposed dead. Yes. The most popular line. Okay, so first off, if we're doing if this is a physical thing, I'm curious what does Londo bring to the table here? Uh Londo Malari would definitely be bringing um his wit <laughs> to the table. Oh wait, no. Um, he would the shadow of his big hair. <laughs> Would be the one of the biggest weapons that Londo would have, and his drinking ability, <laughs> and his ability to drink anyone under the table. That's definitely a Londo 
characteristic. Yes. Now, yes. I don't know how much Yzma can take. I mean, she's really skinny, but I have a feeling, just knowing her personality, that she's the type who wouldn't get drunk ever. <laughs> she just seems like... Yzma flat. actually strikes me as someone who would be kind of a teetotaler. I mean, she just has... She's this old, like, 50s lady kind of that looks like she just pours him away. I'd she kind of reminds me of Corilla Deville, actually, a little bit. I think they would get along very well. Actually. Yeah, they would. They would. I hope we get to see Yzma on Once Upon a Time sometime. That'd be... <laughs> that would be awesome! <laughs> I, I, I don't know how they would find somebody that skinny... Well, but, okay. You know, well, anyway, they can work with it. back to the death of the fight. Besides her, maybe possibly her drinking ability. Do you have any? What else do you think she might have to bring to the table? Well, she does carry around a dagger, so that does make her a little bit dangerous. Plus, she could probably poke somebody's eye out with one of her elbows. <laughs> <laughs> no, it seems to me that they would almost both just bring their uh, thugs to do the fighting for them. That's a fair point. <laughs> Londo loves ordering people around, so he'd have some lackeys. <laughs> To order around. Well, yeah. I, it's hard. These these fights seem to keep changing the the longer the longer they go on. So I'm not sure here. I'm gonna say though that no, it, it has to be just the two of them because uh, we again we we kept the Evangelion out of this. I'd like to point out that Isma kind of never gives up at all like she, I she's very thinking, stubborn yes the only reason why they beat her in the movie is because of a fluke because Kronk popped up when he was not supposed to be there <laughs> <laughs> okay so if that hadn't happened she probably would have won although you could say that Yzma might have survived because of fluke anyway because she fell off the tower and there just happened to be a trampoline on the bottom this is a good point <laughs> <laughs> so you can go either way I don't know I could say Lano could also never uh Put the, you know, never go down in a fight because his ability to argue would never end, <laughs> and he never gives up an argument. Oh, this is this is a very interesting thing. Okay, so I think we're gonna. Have, we oh. need to clarify what type of fight this is. If it's a drinking game, are we like physically fighting, or is this an argument? Like, in I still say it's a it's a fist fight. But again, mm. it, you guys don't have much advantage because Isma is like thin as a stick, and then Londo is. And <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't help a whole lot, but well, say as a fist fight, what do you have to say about that? Is she not allowed to bring her dagger to this? Sure. Okay, she's got a dagger. What other weapons do? You Londo would have a Londo would have a gun, wouldn't he? Yeah, he'd probably have a gun or some ceremonial imperial <laughs> weapon from Centauri somewhere that has probably some untold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the knife of the empire. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah. <laughs> The question is whether he would actually be able to hit her, considering she's such a small target. <laughs> <laughs> and he's drunk. <laughs> okay. I don't know. He might have. They might have some abilities after being certain to a certain level of drunk. If I remember certain episodes, he like acquired some. Abilities. Okay. Okay. We we got to wrap this up. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this to our audience plus Nick because uh, that makes it uneven. So who who votes for Isma? Who votes for Londo? Okay, looks like Londo wins this one. So sorry, Isma, that was that was a really close close match here. Okay. How did Jakar win? Shakespearean acting? He's got he's got some moves. He did kill Londo. <laughs> we decided it was we decided it was pre profit Jakar, not post profit Jakar. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so for our final, we got we got a three-way battle here between Londo, what's his last name? Malari. Londo Malari, Phil Coulson, and Jed Bartlett. <laughs> okay, so everyone makes their last case, I guess. Yeah. Um, so come, I say Director Coulson. Are we, are we just voting on this? Oh, do you want to argue it? Or do we want to do it? Yeah, you're Phil Coulson. Coulson's Sorry, yeah. his guy. Yeah. Brian, you want to come over here and you can argue? I say Phil Coulson because he's Phil Coulson. Director Phil Coulson. <laughs> I say Phil Coulson, actually. <laughs> he was he was actually I, I seriously considered him as my as my person, but I, I, I thought he might have been taken or 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 something. Um so I, I think Phil Coulson could take Jed Bartlett. I, I think it's possible. Wow. So I, I am asking politely if Jed Bartlett can join <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> I'm a good administrator. He's a good administrator. You know, he can he can handle, you know, helping out and doing his part. Okay. So well, he he accepts and he's glad to have you on the team. And so wow, that was one one of them. He conceded. <laughs> what the twist indeed. 
<laughs> Although I, I'm not sure what that means for well, no, that's probably a good thing for America. <laughs> All right. Any thoughts about uh, Londo here? Fighting against both of them might be hard for him, <laughs> even with his hair and his uh, arguability. Um, I don't know. I can only let him say that he was part of the or he well, yeah, he was emperor towards the end. That's uh, true. Yeah. Yeah, he could like make war. <laughs> I, I'll I'll say that Jed Bartlett has plenty of experience with drunk politicians. So that's for sure. And he can manhandle them with the the best of them. So I, I'm pretty sure I can take him for Colson. <laughs> I want to raise, and then we'll be done. Okay then. Um, we gotta wrap this up real quick. So let's get audience votes. Just yell out who you who you want to vote for. Colson. Colson. Okay. <laughs> but here, here's my reasoning. You got a politician and a government agency that's against politicians. So I figure, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> I love how and Nick picked one that uh, he knew wouldn't win, and I picked one that I was pretty sure would. So thank you guys for humoring us with that. What's next? What are, what are we, we doing, doing next? next? We are. Do we have a promo? <laughs> it's crazy oh, here, yes, guys. Yes, it, is, it is promo time. All right, so. can't miss our pro promotions because they're they're paying all the money for the like right. catering. So here's another word right. from our sponsor. This special episode of Derail Trains of Thought is sponsored by Mister Cluck's Chicken Shack. Chicken's so out of this world good, it has its own Hugo. Drunken. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, look we up a lot of beef crickets up there, but I <laughs> okay. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. So that's all that matters. It's that's our right. podcast. That's right. All right. Finally, this is our last section. Yes, then, huh? our last main uh, talking yeah. section, and um, we're going a little long here. So oh, okay, we might speed yeah. this up then. It came from the interwebs. All right, so our last segment, our new segment, is It Came From The Interwebs. Which is very, very new in the grand scheme of this podcast. I think it only came out, like, when was that? Sometime within the 40s, I believe. So, very recently. So, yes. So, the trick is, we, we, we know, we were trying to narrow down. Zach's already out, but we got three more people who could be our, our next podcast host. We shouldn't, you know, we need, like, a reality for the next podcast host. Oh. And so, we figured, it's really tight. We've been talking, it's really tight. So, we thought the best way to settle it is through... Um, some good old-fashioned arcade games. Recently, uh, Internet Arcade Online has put up uh, just hundreds of arcade games of old-school stuff. I mean, you got the Pac-Man and the Marble Madness and the Burger Time and the Joust and the Centipede. A lot of so names we thought, here I never heard of. It's, 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 it's you know, there's cool. a, I was looking through it. There's some one like, what? I tried one, and it was like you just kind of walk around like, catch ghosts in the graveyard. It was like the weirdest thing. I don't know. I mean, it was like for like uh, Atari, like when... The memory was like love. I mean, you gotta go to the, the archive.org, we'll put it in the show notes. But you gotta look at like the uh, the art for these things, they're all really colorful and really cool. It's kind of yeah, it's kind of yeah. like spastic. So, anyway, so, so we're gonna we're gonna test people's metal at old school so games. Here's, here's how this works it's an arcade simulator. So, your you, job relies on, r yes, relies so you on each this. You get five coins. And we're gonna see who lasts the longest in this arcade game with five coins. You get to, you can pick any game you want, but uh, you know you may want to pick something that you're familiar with because if it's something you're not, don't blame us. Oh, I thought we should pick something that they were unfamiliar with. <laughs> I know that would be fun, but <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm gonna let them choose. I mean, there's a big list here, yeah. but choose quickly because we're uh, yes. getting running long here. Big running long here. So who wants to go first? Who wants to play first? Anyone. All right, come Rachel, on come, on come on up. Yeah, you, you'll you sit right sit here. In the head seat here. And I will switch mics. All right, so basically you just, there's like hundreds, yeah. I so think. So just scroll through and see if you, whatever. Oh, Qbert, I mean, that's a good one. Until you find um, something that catches your eye. Street Fighter 2, wow. There are Super some Pac-Man variants in there, if that's, if you want something. Survival, Tasmania, I've never heard of half of these. Tron, oh, I remember playing Tron. That was awesome, the arcade game. Zaxxon. You know, they have like great names, like, you know, good B movie yeah. sort of names, some of them. You know, they do. Monster Bash. I mean, there's a Temple of Doom one in there somewhere. I saw that. Yeah, there it is. Indiana Jones and Golden Axe. Oh, I beat Golden Axe. Me and Dad one time. Really? We were in uh, Atlantic City for some reason. 
and we spent a lot of quarters, and we beat Golden Axe, and it was awesome. Nice. I beat in a handful of arcade games in my day, that and X-Men. You know you want to play Three Stooges. <laughs> I don't Devil think I've zone, ever played beat an arcade game like at the art arcade. So that's that's I'm I'm impressed. I think I play be that and I I think Zachy, were you with us when we beat the uh, the X Men arcade game? The annoying thing about that one is that it then just restarts. <laughs> so you don't get like a congratulations screen or anything. Well, I think you might get a congratulations screen, but then you're like just playing a game. You're like what? So, Frogger somewhere in here. Frogger. I think are there semi alphabetical? I believe they're alphabetical, so it should be in the under the F's. Okay, a little far. Oh, Frogger, right there. Yep, Frogger. All right, here we go. So you click it there, and we will see how you can play the Frogger. Hopefully this comes up. Okay, yeah. You click right there. My question is, how do I play it? Arrow. Just use the arrow. Yeah. That's me. Hmm. Some of these have come up for me. Some of them haven't. So I'm hoping this Oh, no. The interwebs are broken. This isn't where just... There's no more interweb. It's just uh, Skynet. Oh, yeah, you, have you know try what? I know. I play. Yeah, yeah, not in Firefox. Browser. Yeah, yeah. Would, this wouldn't come up for me on Safari. For some reason, it works best in Firefox. Um, yes. Yes. This is the extended version of the interwebs. Actually, this is not any... Uh, <laughs> what was it when we were trying to do the Jim Carrey website? Yeah. It was yeah. very similar. Thankfully, I yes. think I've got a better Thankfully, connection than, better connection than yours. So. No, I did. Yes. Brian's over there practicing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for some Frogger. You know, we really need a Frogger remix now. <laughs> we have a soundtrack after every game. I'm surprised we haven't had Frogger. Well, well, there's only like one Frogger Frog remix, way. but DJ Pretzel has one. Oh, wow. Okay, Nick's Oops. knowledge of Nick's OC knowledge Remix of library OC. is ridiculous. <laughs> it's a little yes. frightening. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Now to get a okay, coin, uh, press five, one. Uh, five. Five. All right, five coins for All right. Rachel. All right, to start. All right, there you go. All right, let's see you get across. I play a board game of. Ah, oh, oh, you know there was a board game of Frogger one time. I remember being somewhere and playing it. Really? Yeah, a board game. I don't know if it was any good. It was kind of even disrepair when I found it when I was a kid. Found it's it interesting. Kid. The first time I played Frogger actually wasn't this. They did a, a Frogger for PlayStation. It was all 3D. And oh, stuff. really? That was my favorite. I never played yeah. that. Now, I do know. I remember Rachel's doing much better than that. Video games live when they make people play Frogger. They're horrible at it. Probably because we have this at home. Oh, so you're an ex you're a frogger expert. No, I played every once in a while. Expert. Same <laughs> played it on the PlayStation as a kid. And then we have like the and then we have like the arcade version. Yeah, the, the PlayStation one, the first level is this same sort of setup. You're crossing the street. You know what? I'm not are there other levels? <laughs> I don't know if there are are there other levels in the arcade in this one? Well, arcade they get harder. Arcade they get harder. Obviously. Okay. Oh, okay. Go. They go fast. Yeah. In in the PlayStation one, they were like, there's one where they're on. You're on like little platforms over lava and stuff. Okay. And um, she's good enough that she might not need five coins here, Tim. She's got three frogs already there. Here, have me the. I forgot to start the stopwatch, but it's ah, been about. Oh, I can't see. Oh, sorry. I love it when people. I love it when people walk across me or in front of me. It's been about what a minute or so so far. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to win this well, thing. They're going, they're I, going really slow. Oh, you know, partly, I think, uh, I think these things run a little slower sometimes on oh, the do they? than they would do on arcade. Is it a little slower arcade. than the arcade? I think it might be. But, but hey, that's nice. And it probably doesn't... Well, I remember when I was playing Marvel Madness the other day, and I still wasn't any good at it, but... Uh -huh. She wins! All right. She beat level one. Yay. All right. Nice. Should we go into someone else and say she, she got 100%? Sounds good. Uh, All right. Awesome. Good work. Basically, good work. you just got to complete a level. <laughs> All right. You are in the best running right now for a podcast host. Because we, we your Frogger playing ability is worth more than about anything else. Um, we'll get back to you on uh, it's that. It's six digit, uh, six figures, all zeros. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, Nathan, you're standing here. Looks like he's ready. Come to pick go. Uh, any game you want. You know, Flicky, Field Goal, Exterion, the Electric Yo-Yo. Nope, no, that's cheating. No, that's you gotta cheating. use the in browser. In browser. Hey, golden Axe. Golden Axe. Okay, you're gonna be the dwarf, or the. Oh, you click right here, up here at the screen, so to play in. in. All right. Might have menus. to run through some menus. We'll see. Spacebar to start. I think the extra buttons are like control and option and things like that. If I yeah, I think yeah, I think you're right. Hopefully it will or tell me. Or else I'm going to be mashing buttons. Winners. Oh wow! Don't, winners drugs. don't use uh, drugs. Oh man, no that's like the because no one plays video games. High. <laughs> high. <laughs> um, some of the developers do. Um. All right. Pick your player. You want to be Zorzum yeah, there? 
yeah, or I, was, uh, I tend to pour, uh, run the barbarian. Ah, I'm not surprised. Anyone else just start on fire because that's what uh, yeah, you do, I guess. I guess. Uh, yeah, now, now to figure out whatever. Oh wait, he did does. you give me my? Five oh wait, did coins? you give me my five? Yeah, I have credits. You got three. I have three credits. Yep. Thank you. Oh, oh you jerk. So I've never played uh, Golden Axe. Yeah. I'm so I feel sorry for you, but um, I believe oh, it's largely like a, you know, you're a barbarian or dwarf. Yeah, I've never seen this no. You never played this game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Basically, it's one of those you just go around fighting people. It's like a precursor of uh, or what, what is it? Streets yeah, of Rage wanna, sort yeah, of thing. I want to jump. Try dang up. it! No, that just oh. moves me up. I wanna jump. Wow, this this is really <laughs> running really. Wow. Cool. I guess I'm just gonna go around, go around and bash people, people in the face jump. and not be able to jump. This ugly. A lot of these uh, games don't run quite right yet. Hey, you want some more? Like well, this is move. well, this is a much more uh, modern arcade game than Frogger. <laughs> True, the graph. <laughs> Big difference in graphics here. Oh, oh, so arcade games, like whenever we go to arcade, okay. Natasha and I, we always what? have to play Pac-Man and the... try to beat each okay, other's scores. <laughs> That's kind of our, our routine. Turn around, around, dang it! Getting oh. screwed by controls. No, no, it's just you're horrible. <laughs> No. <laughs> Man, this might take. This might take a little while. Yeah, we might not be able to do a whole uh, session of this. What the, what the, turn around! <laughs> of course, he might. He might die. Uh, but he is that a health bar on the bottom? Yeah. Turn around! I hate this game. It's kind of like Double Dragon, but with a. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if the original arcade actually ran this slowly. No, it, no, it was pretty. It was pretty. The in browser thing. Uh, okay. Oh, now he turns okay. around. Oh, now he turns around. Go yeah. eat this. Nathan is uh, really getting into this. Game. The emulator, I believe they're they're still trying to tweak the in game, you know, on in in browser playing. They're still tweaking. I think you can also download them or. I, it was a thief and he gave me. Magic it looked like he swallowed hey. like a frog. Hey. When he <laughs> okay, now there's a guy that's riding. A, is that a bird or is that a lizard? I'm not sure what it is, and I believe it is an Amazon. Oh, now it's wow. I think it is like some sort of like dinosaur. That was that was nice. That was nice. Okay, you could jump. I, that's not fair. I can't figure out how to jump. So inter interesting thing, DJ Pretzel also has a golden axe remix. I'm detecting an unintentional, <laughs> detecting an unintentional Isn't it like, theme. I'm trying to remember what it's called. This isn't it isn't a title, like but I remember it. I think probably. Back then the titles were not particularly creative. I remember oh, those no. guys. So yeah, when he when when Nathan uh, bites the dust, we might have yeah. to uh He's yeah, no kidding. I, for going, I can't do half the normal things I normally can do. I'll just wait till the boss comes uh -oh. in his chariot. Uh -oh. Is it chariot time? Not quite yet. Uh -oh. oh, no, there's two oh. of them. There's two of them. Those, it's the Hammer Brothers. Hammer Brothers? What are they doing in this game? <laughs> they're a little Well, they look they're like they're... What are you doing? They're somewhere between wrestlers and Hammer Brothers. Oh, I thought See? you meant like... They yeah. have a key. I was thinking... Oh. I was thinking of Mario no, Brothers. No, oh, oh, he's dead. He's uh, dead. So have more lives, oh, wow. So oh, I guess oh, wow. the credit so actually gives you extra you lives here yeah. in this game. Yeah. No, yeah, it's like, like, see, it still like, says like, five credits. Oh, you get three lives, you you get three lives per coin. All right. This is like the final boss of this level, I'm guessing. No, not even. Well, it might be. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but it looks kind of odd. That hurts. Okay, that hammer comes down pretty hard. The thing is, if this was a modern game, when the hammer would come down, there would be blood all That's over true. the screen. Okay. Oh, you're dead. The the level. Level. So, so, unfortunately, Rachel is still winning. So. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> because she's good at Frogger. Uh, <laughs> Looks like Brian is up next. All right, Brian, what do you want to? What do you want to play? Come on, you want to play? Let's look here. How about Burger Time? Burger, burger Time. All right. Excellent choice. Are you an expert at Burger Time? <laughs> Brook time, it might be horrendously slow, kind of like service at some fast food restaurants, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Yep, just press the run here. If you haven't played Brook time, this is one of those weird games. Oh, nice. It's a weird game where you just, it's like Donkey Kong Matt meet building a burger. <laughs> yeah, because I play the NES version too, and you like run along the floor basically. So yeah, I'll set this up for you. Game ready. This is not an easy game either. No, it's not an easy game. <laughs> You're being chased by a sausage and an egg. I'm not completely sure why. <laughs> or what the premise or what is the premise exactly. exactly. <laughs> All the food seems very angry at you in this game. And you, th if you, you attack it with pepper. And then you like run along these four, like all the ingredients for these giant hamburgers are built into the floor and you run along them to make get them to drop onto the floor beneath. And, and you can smash the people with the... 
Oh, have you not played this, Nathan? This is a... Ah, no, see, that's good work. Brian just killed a sausage. Is that what he used to say? <laughs> apparently, my sisters say if you got caught, you got tickled, they apparently. Do. You got tickled. They took you and fall on your back and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh yourself to death, basically. <laughs> so here's what I think, Tim. I think some future what if when you make video games, uh, make movies off these old school arcade games, okay? I mean, they're making one of what Tetris. Yes, now? Tetris, which is, which is what people used to always joke about when Hollywood ran out of, out of ideas and make a Tetris. And now movie. they're apparently running out of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's kind of sad. I mean, Burger Time. I can see some, you know, some Disney-esque thing about some guy who's trying to. He's trying to make the world's biggest burger. Uh -huh. And then there was these people disguised as uh, fried like, eggs. And well, no, maybe you know, some sort of alien goo comes down and brings alive the breakfast food. <laughs> yes. That don't that doesn't like the lunch food. Oh, Michael Bay will be all over that. Yeah. So, I, you're actually doing a lot better than I did when I played this the other day. You have some mad skills games there, Brian. Away, games away, <laughs> you could call I think that's a whole, is that a whole genre of games you run away? That's true. Uh -huh. That's hilarious. No, that was an ice cream cone because apparently nothing makes you feel better about eating burgers than some ice cream. This is an all-American game. That's what I'm saying. I feel like the name of the movie could be like Teenage Mutant Ninja Veggies. Teenage oh, so <laughs> Mutant Burger Time. And you know, then, then they would have a, a catchphrase like, It's Burger Time! Who got you? It was a sausage or a hot dog. All right, thing. well, are we cutting them off then? We've been cutting I think so, first. yeah. All right. Well, that was actually a really well played well, game there. I, that was better than I've seen this Burger game, Time lately. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, complete that burger. Yay, one burger done. Excellent uh, choice. I'm glad you I'm glad you picked this one. <laughs> so do we have any more time? Well, that, I think Zach had. Oh, Zach, well, yeah, that Zach hasn't played yet. Zach loves his video games. <laughs> so what do you want to play here, Zach? Super Pac-Man, Marvel Madness, no, I here, I think Joust. What I would actually like to do is tell you about what actually came from the interwebs. Should be about something cool, something cool that came from the interwebs. <laughs> like the awesome Chrome browser, awesome, yes. Chrome browser uh, that I put computer on my the sister's day, computer the other day. Where every, where every showed picture up showed up as Cage. Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> That is pretty awesome. Every single picture is awesome. I see. I don't know. Any of we'll just pick one. We'll, we'll pick some random thing. Come like Devil Zone. Okay. Okay. Let's see. The player is an eye traveling through a maze. The goal is to shoot. It's, it's, a, it's a rip off of Pac. Pac Man. Okay. Let's try. It. You want to play this Pac Man rip off here? Why not? We knew you did. Which one of these should I do? Full screen? It'll work like that. We just press space bar. Okay, sorry. And then those are going to move. And then uh, what do you use to attack there, Nathan? Control? Attack? Why don't you shoot? I, I thought you were shooting stuff. I think there is somewhere, but that's too sophisticated for us. What in the world? It's like TIE Fighters. It looks like a Pokeball. It does kind of look like a Pokeball. I'm not sure what... Up does not work. Up doesn't work. Oh. Oh, if... Okay, well, you, you have okay, five well, you, coins. You have five this is the sort of game I'm that you the need. only okay. person who's got the up, the up button does not work. No. How did you go oh, there? How did you go works. there? That one worked. Hmm. I don't know what this I'm is, doing. This is kind of psychedelic. Oh, we can't pause this thing. We can't pause switches. switches. <laughs> can, you t can you do it with these? With W? No. What? Oh, wow. What are those other things? I don't know. This is very strange. Those other eyes need the dry eyes commercial. So this map, it looks a lot like a Pac-Man area. Did you get that? I was trying. I don't know. <laughs> well, you picked the one that none of us knew how to play. Yeah, that's okay. One more time. Okay. So we gotta be able to. All right. Oh, there we go. Right here. Yep. So you're shooting things out of your eye, apparently. We've. No, I don't trust any video games. I don't trust any video games. You can't. Oh, it's a Doctor Who game, apparently. Bow ties are cool. Well, why did you not get that one that you just went by? No, you have to shoot the bow ties. That's weird. Okay, I've never seen this before, and I think there's probably a reason for that. It's like Cubert, like. Kind of, yes. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. You can't imagine. Oh, you can. Oh, you can. Oh, you can shoot your enemy. Actually, I think Pac-Man's sitting here thinking, I wish I could do that. He just eats them. I was gonna say there's there's a little bit of space space. It's a it's a weird. It's like 
<laughs> it's the eye of the beholder. No, no, it's just able. Oh, okay. Because yeah. yeah, I am the eye. Yeah, I, You're right. Or it's, or it's, or it's, the, or it's the eye. Really, the, really, the, really, <laughs> the eyes have it. What? Why do you keep doing that? Is it, do I, have I pressed control too many times? Does it move stuff around? I don't know. I, all right, well, I haven't looked well. at the control system for this game at all. I'm losing. I'm losing. I know he said he quit, but oh, okay. Hang on. It's okay. There it is. All right. Well, he wasn't in the running. Oh, we got you were number four after J. J Michael Zelinski there. <laughs> J. <laughs> right there. There, see, it's going very slow. <laughs> all right. Well, you're all right. You're out right, of time. Right. I'm sorry. Thank. you. Thank you for playing, right. Rachel. Because you won, um, you don't get an audition because you just you did a. Blah, blah. You don't get the role because you, you, played, a because you played a game you already played before. But I'll give you a prize anyway. I'll give you a prize anyway. Yeah, I got this out of a yeah, cereal box. A cereal it's a little box. mega a little mega blocks mega uh, car. Box, uh, hey, Fio and Rennie each have one of those. <laughs> and it's got stickers. You can either choose to put Hello Kitty or Power Rangers stickers on it. Well, ours have both because Fio and Rennie have both decided to put their own stickers. Oh, on. <laughs> so Rennie puts all the Hello Kitties, <laughs> and Fio does the other. Okay, we'll go for it. Okay. Ooh, nice. All right then, Tim. It's been it's been an event. It has been an event. It has been it's been a one of a kind extravaganza. That it has. And we are so glad and that you folks so have been here to listen here through to listen all of it. Yes. All, uh, all two hours plus. Two hours oh boy. We're going on now. <laughs> so Tim, you know, I was thinking that all this talk of five hundredth episode and everything. You know, I don't I don't know if I want another host join us. I mean, we got a, we got a good thing going here. I, th I think we're fine. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Guys, so, thanks for coming. Uh, we're not the, the position has been filled. Yeah. No. It's not wasted. It's been spent needlessly. It's been hijacked. <laughs> Shanghai. Shanghai. Uh, we've been up to some malarkey. Malarkey. Funny business. <laughs> <laughs> Bamboos. <of the> Bamboos. <laughs> you, know, you know the ad I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> yes, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, anyway. All right. We better just wrap this thing up. Yep. I think the hecklers, the puppet hecklers. Do you hear someone talking? I don't hear anything. No. no, no. I don't okay. So. All right, so I think right, next so time for the wonderful thing we do at the end of all of our episodes. You mean our contact info? Yes. All right. So everyone looks forward to. So if you would like to get a hold of us, so that someday in the hundredth episode you could somehow join us, um, you can write us at derailedtrains at gmail .com. You can visit our website. Leave us some comments on how ridiculously long this episode was at derailedtrainsofthought.blogspot.com. Or if you have suggestions for the podcast, uh, we'll, we're always willing to listen. Doesn't mean we'll do it. Um, if you say there's a segment you don't really like, um, maybe we'll ignore you. Maybe yeah. we, we will. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Zach is not paying no. any attention to me now. We're on YouTube now under uh, Derailed Trains of and Thought. We're a little behind. I was trying to get get us all caught up, get them all on there before Thanksgiving, and trying for that. We'll see. I might have to double well, most up of them to make are up. it. But yeah, we're like. And then we have one more episode this year before we hit 2015. Yep. Next uh, next month we'll yep. do our uh, December podcast yep. or December week. By the way, did you see that Homestar had a had a Halloween thing? I haven't watched the official Halloween one. I watched the safety video. Oh but. okay. Yeah. Anyway, random. Side random tangent, here. Yeah. Okay. A little derailed. A little. Um, we should change our name to. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have a soundtrack. This is a special. <laughs> I, I think I think George Lucas just came in here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is a really special one. This is a special soundtrack. Yes. Okay. So I had Tim send me the list of our soundtracks, which has been almost 100 soundtracks. We had 49 episodes, two an episode. Um, and I thought, I would like to do something. So one day I was horribly bored slash obsessive. And I got my Audacity out, which is the editing system, and I basically spliced together roughly half of them. There's about 48-ish songs in this five-minute um, recap or uh, like a um, what do you, clip show, yeah. I guess. Montage. Montage. I don't know what um, you call it. Medley, maybe. Medley, yes. It's, uh, you know, so it's a little amateur, but it, it flows together decent well. And it's more than anything fun and kind of just shows the, the width and breadth of our uh, love for OC Remix. Yes. There's <laughs> all styles of music in here. I think this thing is, is really cool. So, so uh, we'll be presenting uh, Turn On The Radio. It's the name of the, uh, what I decided to name it. And it is remixed by everyone. <laughs> we'll have a full list in the show notes. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. We better. Yeah, yes. yeah. I'll get your list of that. Um, 
Other than that, I guess this has been actually a lot of fun. It, it really has. Thanks. It's been all over the place. Yeah. Thanks for for listening. Thank you to the Muppets for letting us use their yeah, theater. Thank you to all our uh, applicants for uh, not getting the job. Yeah, and uh, thank even those who were sick and couldn't make it here tonight. Yeah. So here's to uh, 50 more. Yep. Amen. Uh-oh. So. Oh. Oh wow. All right. Oh, oh thank applause. you. Thank you. Thank you. Do the Muppets get applause? <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. This is Tim. This has been Nick. Adios. That's all we've got. Hey, man, it ain't no party without any music. Turn on the radio, huh?
This special episode of the Rail Trains of Thought has been brought to you by Gold's Pawn Shop. Whether you're looking to enhance your magical abilities, exact revenge on an enemy, or simply fling an entire kingdom into a small town in Maine, we have what you're looking for. No matter how long ago you may have stumbled across some enchanted object or obscure the curse that needs undone, we have you covered. That's the promise of Gold's Pawn Shop. Because while you might just be another nameless face out there, here, dearie, your family.